What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another installment of the Hall of Game podcast. Uh, I'm your host, O'Shea Duke Jackson. I want to give a first big shout out to a brother by the name of Bo Rakes, B-E-A-U-R-A-K-E-S. Check out his channel. He's a brother that lives in the Atlanta area, uh, and he frequents the Dominican Republic. And the, and the reason why we're naming this show, what are the best side hustles from black men? Because I did get this idea from him, right? He does have at least a YouTube channel that talks about side hustles, and uh, he's going to be starting another channel talking about side hustles. That's all that he specializes in. He's a re really talented guy. So when you guys get a chance, go check out Bo Rake's YouTube channel. And he discusses these sorts of things um, in, in more detail than, than, than we do. And he interviews people on different side hustles that can make extra money. So today we're going to be dealing with brothers that are in this particular field. We got my man, Steve the Dean. He's no stranger to my channel. Uh, Dr. Pat and Gabe A., and we're going to talk about the best side hustles, uh, especially right now with the coronavirus pandemic, that black men can do to bring in more additive income. Uh, so usually we talk about, you know, careers and stuff like that are, you know, a, a full fledged careers. But what if you have something that you want to start part time and get into that? Let's start off by introducing Steve Dean. Go ahead. Let them know what's going on, brother. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Steve Dean Williams, dating coach and uh, entrepreneur. All right, all right. Go ahead, Doc. Uh, this is Dr. Patrick Dix coming from South Carolina, back on the Hall of Game uh, again to spread some love and to, you know, help everybody out. All right. And Brother Gabe? Hey, hey. This is Gabe A here on YouTube, cybersecurity consultant. Um, yeah, just here to get some game and contribute to the conversation. Thanks for having me. All right, and we will have Brother Andre Hatchet. We do not offer to give about him because, you know, he has the – uh, what is what is that 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 brother? Uh, the notary, mobile notary, right? Don't forget about Andre Hatchet because he's definitely gonna be on here in a few minutes. So he'll be on to talk about this. Let me start with our brother Gabe, right? Because when I sent the email out, um, I think you were one of the first people to respond, and I was kind of shocked actually because you know brother Gabe is uh you know is is a career man, an engineer by trade, and then also now working in in cybersecurity. Uh, but you but you do have other things going on, right? Go ahead and drop some knowledge, man. Why why were you excited about talking about this particular topic regarding side hustles? Absolutely. Yeah, I thought it was really good, a really good uh subject because I think a lot of times in these spaces and and I guess the black community in general, we really mm -hmm. promote that idea of, of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneur, having your own, not being uh held down by the man in a nine to five job. And mm -hmm. I think that one thing that I've been able to leverage through my career is not only depending upon my nine to five job, but allowing mm -hmm. that nine to five job to uh, fund a side hustle uh, or an additional stream of uh, income. And I think that I've done that through real estate, allowing mm -hmm. my nine to five job to fund my real estate business. And mm -hmm. now it's come come to the point where my real estate business is starting to uh, 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 actually starting to reflect my nine to five job uh, jobs income uh the salary i get from there and that's really the goal right for 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 me is for my side hustle to begin to replace my nine to five job or consulting job and it's to the point where not only looking at entre entrepreneurship and working nine to five but really transition into that whole idea of i don't need this job to do anything that i want to do and i really think that that's my major mo motivation in doing that allowing my nine to five to supply my entrepreneurship opportunities mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. eventually get to the point where I don't need that nine to five job and I can work another job if 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 I wanted to or mm -hmm. if I didn't want to. I, I could just do whatever I want to do. Yep. Well, let me let me stick with you right there. I want to ask a question. Shout out to Brother Yarley, uh, Brother Yarley out of the, the NYC area. One of the best side hustles to make quick bucks is personal fitness. I charge clients $50 to $100 an hour. Much love, O'Shea. That's my brother. He's be all, all through the world, Ghana. He's, he's he's knocking them down everywhere you go, Brazil. But brother, let me ask you this, okay? Because you you make a point, and we talked about this actually leading off into last uh, yesterday's conversation with the brother mm -hmm. KC that was a, a Nigerian American businessman, and you were saying the same thing that African American men should be focused more so on if you have Africa plan, getting a good business, getting money there, and funding that business initially. Now I definitely understand that, but how do you find the right opportunity? to fund that side. I mean, like, you know, cause you, you're, you're talking about using your regular money to fund the side hustle. And now the side hustle mm -hmm. makes money on its own. How do you know which side hustle is the good business to start or look into? Yeah. 
I think one one thing that came from that past super that one super chat that you just read is he said one of the best side hustles to make a make a quick buck, right? And I want to point that out, right? I don't think that all side hustles are created equal, and I okay. don't think that every side hustle needs to be quick, right? I think that that's a very important thing because when I looked into the side hustle that that I got into. I knew that this was going to be a marathon rather than something that I'll be able to turn around quickly. So I think that when looking for side hustles, look for those opportunities that you see that has a future, right? A long term implications rather than something quick where you get in and get out. So I think that when I was looking, I was looking for something that can build wealth and build okay. in revenue. Yep. OK. OK. Shout out to Uncle Tony, man. Uh, Tony Davis. In the building. Let me go ahead, uh, Doc. Let me just let uh, 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 Brother Andre Hatchet introduce himself and what is it he does. I, I, I see you've been working out, player. I, I was trying to get the summer, trying to get the summer body together, huh? You've been working out, player. You know, don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt nobody, don't you hurt nobody now. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well, man. Andre Hatchet here. Um, great conversation. Honored to be part of it. Longtime entrepreneur, um, real estate investor, homeowner. And just black men doing black things. All right, all right. Let me let me uh, let's let me do this. So we're definitely gonna hear from Brother Dre tonight. Let me go ahead to Brother uh, to, to 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 let's 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 let Steve rock and then we go to Doc real quick. Steve, uh, now I know that you were quite the entrepreneur uh, in, in many different ways. What do you think about this whole side hustle thing and 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 what's your strategy behind it? Well, I think it's something that all men should. Uh, definitely do uh outside of work but they have to understand that it's a lot of time consuming in that it's not just something that you can pick up and put down uh i remember before you know my uh coaching and my dating stuff kicked off in the 90s i was i was working two or three hustles at one time but um now you know i always show you o'shea now i, I got the perfect side hustle um uh, that makes lots and lots of money with less time and uh if you want me to talk about that now or wait? I'm yeah, kidding. no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Drop the knowledge on them, man. Yeah, the first the, the thing is called it's called Amazon Flex. All right. Okay. Amazon. And um, I just want to give them, I'm gonna show y'all. Just give me an example. Like when you join the Amazon, even though let me show you real quick. All right, you can see the numbers right here. Uh, this is kind of basic how it is. Now, what you gotta do is subtract an hour, even though they have you work an hour, they say four hours and 30 minutes for a hundred dollars for that that uh job. It's technically three hours and 30 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, let me show you this. Uh, give me a second. This is the best part because they Amazon does delivery and it does uh, pick up like store stuff. So here's one. Uh, there was a, it was a four hour job. All right, let's do the math. It was a, it was, all right, here's the job. Now remember you subtract the hour. So the, it was only two hours of work at $60, but then look what you got in tips. So, wow. So, but and that's just like and that's just in a few hours. So uh it's 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 easy money, it's the easiest money to make because all you do, <clears throat> excuse me, all you're doing is scanning and just dropping packages off. It's 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 flat. I'm not gonna say it's the best. I don't want to say that, but what I will say is that it, it's something that's very flexible for these young men if they're okay. working the daytime or the nighttime. Amazon starts early in the morning at like 5 30 and they'll go all the way till nine o'clock. So it, it it gives you flexibility. You can okay. work your own schedule and things like that. So, it's something like so you were able to make a hundred and fifty six dollars in two hours. Uh, one hundred sixty. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember when you when you first started talking about that, I was like, Steve, man, you ain't gonna sign up for this shit, man. You over here playing. He's like, No, nah, I'm about to sign. I remember I was getting on you. I was yeah, like, Man, stop playing. And then you actually started doing it. So, do they pay the same day or how does it work with the payments? Yeah, you get paid. You get paid same day. Paid same day. So, uh, basically, I'll just give you an example. Yeah, you get you get paid same day, uh, but it's again it's it's all it's it's oh damn it's downloading my new app. I'll give you show you in a second, but yeah, it's it pays you same day, and uh, but as far as the tips go, you just gotta wait a, a two days for the tips. But I mean, you can make up to, uh, I mean, lots. I mean, the money is ridiculous on how you can how you can make it because hold on, let me install this thing. It's ridiculous because uh, it's set on an hourly rate so they'll give you okay. blocks, two hour blocks three hour and the top is four four and a half hour blocks but the rate is uh 
at between, let's say some places, a hundred dollars, some places, $120 uh, for three hours. You can get it at $70, two hours, uh, 50 to $40. But remember, just because it says two hours, doesn't mean you're going to do the whole two hours. All right. So here's, let me open the app up real quick. So when you, uh, when you work it, let me just show you an earning, just give you an example. Hold on. Here we go. Um, earnings. All right, here we go. So, uh, yeah, so that, that job right there, like here, here's an example. Like, so, okay, here, here, here's an example for June 5th. This is a small example. All right. So that, was that, all right. Oh shit. Hold on. That's a job. Hold on. Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> here you go. So that was a, I was damn dude. Shit. Here we go. Am I touching it? All right. There you go. So like, wow. for instance, um, I mean, these are the things that and they always show you your, your deposit, right? Your deposit. So as you can see, June 5th, uh, I made two hundred fifty-one dollars, and as mm. you can see, uh, I only worked a few hours. So uh, okay. it's it's, it's you got to find it in your area, but it's a great way of making easy money. They, they just okay. like giving you money. Okay, okay, no, no, that's 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 definitely wow. awesome. Let's go to uh, brother Doc, and then we are gonna go to brother Dre. Uh, brother brother Dre, uh, uh, brother the doctor uh, Doc, right? Go ahead and, and and drop some knowledge on them about the you know side hustle stuff like that. Well, I've been having two side hustles since for about six years, and I've talked about it first when I came on there. I am an adjunct faculty member at several schools, and some of those schools, I get paid for each class. I don't have to lecture. I just grade papers. Everything is set up. For one class, I can get $1,500. If I teach up to four classes, that's $6,000. With taxes, you're talking about $4,000 I can get twice a month. That's just from one school. It's not every school together. Wow. And and that's just with my master's degree. Now that I have a doctorate degree, I talked to another school. They told me you teach undergraduate student students, you get 190 per student. If you teach master's students, you get 220 per student. If you teach doctorate students, you get 240. They told me that every class, they have new classes that start every eight weeks. So that is my side hustle. That's what afforded me to pay for school. And last wow. year, I believe I made 60 something plus thousand dollars just off of teaching school. That's not even counting my full time job. And wow. that's how I if you look at it, that's how you could pay your mortgage. That's how you could pay your debt. That's how I paid on a lot of my debt. And mm -hmm. O'Shea, you particularly, you're going to medical school. You can end up being the chief medical officer of a school and be a, a faculty member adjunct. And with the COVID-19 crisis again, I know a lot of brothers are into tech and into STEM. I talked to Keith the Techie about it. Everything is going to go online. And the advantage of teaching online, you have the ability to teach from anywhere. All I need is my laptop. All I have to do is grade papers and respond to some discussion questions. Because Whoa. they sent me two classes over the weekend and they have 25 students. So if it stays up to 25 students, it's $1,650. That's $3,200. For the next five weeks, I teach the students, they do their work, and I'm set up to get a paycheck every two weeks from school. And one of the other schools, I get paid every month. So for mm -hmm. brothers out there, they're looking for men to teach, uh, particularly black men. To me, it's a great way to make money. Um, if your mortgage is $1,900 a month, you could damn near have a year and a half worth of payments in six months by mm -hmm. adjunct being an adjunct faculty member. Um, wow. Like, Yes. I mean, it rolls like that. And if any black man, you know, you're listening to me, just go to Indeed and look for adjunct faculty. They'll hire some schools to hire you with a bachelor's degree. Some schools to hire you with a master's degree. You just have to sit there and learn how it works. Some of them use Blackboard. Some of them use Canvas. But you're not actually lecturing. I, I never want to teach for a school right now where I have to actually lecture. The kids, uh, the students do the work on their own. And that's how everything is put in. And I just grade it. And oh, somebody's about to say something. No, no, go ahead. You're doing good. Oh, yeah. And, and you have certain people, man, you could teach seven or eight schools and make a shitload of money. If you a single man like myself right now, get married next year. Um, I am getting all the money that I can because I'm finished with school. All I have to do now is go to work and. I just grade the stuff online and I go out online. I know I applied for 500 jobs since February to teach adjunct and now my phone is blowing up because now <laughs> I have better credential. Um, I'm telling you, man, some days I apply for 30 to 40. No, I, it's probably 800. Some days I apply to 30 to 40 jobs on Indeed.com, just going through, going through, going through. And I know I want an extra job because 
when I get sell the house that I'm in now and buy another one, my full time job is not going to pay for my house. My part time job is going to pay for my house. And you have to see how to take your money and pay down your debt because most Negroes will make a, sh- a lot of money on the side and blow it on bitches and stupid shit. So <laughs> um, I'm just being honest. You have to take your money and save it because how the world is changing. You need to make as much money as you can, but we all have debt. And my main thing is not to have so much debt over my head. And if something arises, I can always say, if I need to buy something, my part-time job can help me do it. Okay. No, no, no. Great, Let great, great. great. Okay. Because I finished my master's. Yeah, I got a go question ahead, go ahead. for him. Yeah, because I ahead. finished my master's in this upcoming March. So you're telling me I could just apply for virtual adjunct professor jobs and can be making income from not necessarily lecturing. But just yeah. checking papers and responding to 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 questions it's, online. Yeah, I um got my graduate degree in June in June 2014, no May 2014, and I got okay. a job in person. And wow. I transitioned online four years ago. So I teach for a school in Florida. Each class is fifteen hundred dollars right now. So right now I have about seven or eight classes. I got two that end tomorrow and I had a set up two today and I got one going on. Now that's just one school. And wow. the other school that I teach for, I got to meet with the guy. He said, we need your credentials. Do you mind teaching for us in the fall and the summer? So while I was doing all of my doctorate stuff, man, I was teaching like 10 classes. Sometimes, man, I had like 150 students. So wow. I was trying to get all the money possible. Anybody out there that has the credentials, you could go to a tech school and do this. It's money. Yeah, I started. I got, on, yeah, I was gonna say I got one question because kind of in my situation, I would say I don't mean to keep asking the questions, but I if I make, I'm at the point where if I make any more money, that I'll probably jump into a different tax bracket and I'll be taxed even more. Do you have yours, uh, your business for teaching organized under a? LLC or a different type of corporation, or is this all going towards your personal income? Personal income, and I have to pay money every year. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. that's how it's going. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh yeah. yeah go ahead. I'll say I got no more questions. I was, I was, I was. Well, about no, 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 no. <laughs> no problem. And, and guys, thank you, brother uh, D. Does it for the two dollars uh, super chat? I really appreciate you, brothers, for being here. Make sure you like the video and don't forget. Do me a favor, brother. Uh, all of you guys. Subscribe to Brother Bo Rakes, right? I want you guys to uh, check his channel out. Uh, he's a good brother out of the Atlanta area. I did get this uh, idea from him. It's not my own idea. It is his idea, right, uh, from a few, about a year ago. So check out Bo Rakes' channel right there. Subscribe, hit the bell. Let me know that you've done so. Brother Andre Hatchett, the king of the side hustles and small business. Go ahead and, and, and let us know what, <laughs> what, what we can do, brother. Yeah, so um, I wrote down a couple of things first. So don't always call it a side hustle and don't treat it as a side hustle. So of course there's like gray area with those things. So sometimes when we hear the word side hustles, we think of it, okay, we're gonna do it on the back end or or we'll get to it when we get to it. Especially if you're in a service industry, you don't want to do that because you don't want to show that this is something you do. It's a hobby or whatever, whatever. You want to do it like you're doing it for real. So, so that's that one. So, so don't treat it like it's your side girl. Treat it like it's your main girl that you go to on occasion. You got me on that one? It's your main girl that you go to on occasion. So, 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 so that's that one. Um, I love it. I am all about multiple, I don't even call multiple streams of income. I call it a multiple income systems because I don't want it to even come off like it's just some kind of flabby thing in the wind. It's a multi it's a multiple income income system, not even strange. It's yeah, it's essential and it's mandatory. I don't trust no job. That's why I don't have one. I don't trust no job, right? I don't trust no job. I don't trust white employers. I don't trust any of that stuff. You have to know how to create income for yourself. So uh, my business that I've been doing shit 16 years, how old am I? 14 years, long ass time. I started doing it part time. I was I had a job as a teacher's aide, and I was started my mobile notary business in the evenings and on weekends. Then I make so much money. I left the full time workforce, and I've been a full time entrepreneur ever since the age of 27, and now I'm 38. So in a nutshell, uh, I would make between sixty dollars and two fifty per appointment. 
it was low startup cost, uh, probably like 500 bucks or so. Got licensed, I studied under my friend, and I've been doing well ever since, and I've taught thousands of people how to do the same thing as a little notary public. One of the best things about it is, I don't even have to do the job myself. I have what you call now a, a, a notary signing service, so I have people all throughout the country who I subcontract, and I have a client who pays me 150, 250, whatever, I have someone else do the job for 75 or 100 bucks or, or, or 125 and I pocket the difference. So, uh, and I have people who, 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 who I know of who, who do it part time and people I know who do it full time. But it's a great way to make money in a faster time period without a lot of money out of pocket. So, I'm all about multiple income, man. Multiple income, man. Bring that sucker in. Bring it in often and. It's, <laughs> And as healthy as possible. So I'm with it, man. All right. All right. And shout out to uh, Brother Andre. And uh, you guys have heard that story before. You know, me, I, up until 2015, I guess I'll, you'll talk about this. And one of my, you know, collaborations have been with, you know, Steve Dean and the Brother Pilled LAR. And now this, uh, my side hustle as a full-time student was, uh, with social media content, and this is not uncommon with uh, people that are in professional school. You see, even people in residencies doing it. So my side hustle was YouTube, and it and I didn't even know you really could make money from it until one day I was posting content, and uh, I made like uh, wake the hell up told me to put my Asians page on. I made thirty dollars in one day. I was like thirty dollars, <laughs> and um, so when else I made thirty dollars, and I said, well, if I can make that, I can make a hundred. Then I made a hundred dollars in a day. And then um, and then by the end of that year, I was making like five hundred dollars a day. Uh, and then after that, it was all she wrote. So for me, um, coming into the social media content space for an underserved market, which was, you know, us as black men, um, that became a, a, a side hustle that became, I guess you want to call it right now. Currently, while I'm building my other life in, 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 in my professional school, my career. And um, I just want to say this. It's taken me many places that I could never ever went on my own, uh, you know, as far as I don't think academia or working a job. So one of the things that can help a brother uh, do well is if you are um, creating content online that's valuable. That's 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 something that's unpopular. Popular. All of us do it. Right. Steve Dean is a dating coach and. Uh, Andre Hatchett has a he uses this channel. I don't even think he uses ads, but he uses this channel to to sell, which is a uh, very similar to Erica Williams, and it's very similar to uh, Glennon Cameron, uh, who's the like the god of that, uh, you know that that strategy, and um, being able to link up with other creators has allowed me to to build this community that like literally any time that I would like to make money in a day, um, I I can I can call somebody and and we could do a show or I could do a show myself. Um, I know the market. I know what guys want to hear. I know what what guys would like. So, um, in in this you know social media uh, uh, content business, is you can sell your own products, which is what you see here with Andre Hatchet. You can sell your own merchandise. Uh, you can sell your courses. You can give people to support you on Patreon. You can uh, now Facebook monetization has allowed you to get fan pages. I know guys like uh, I remember like Tanya TKO was on YouTube, uh, but now she's on Facebook. I would probably assume. She must make at least a hundred grand a month on, on just with Facebook ads alone. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, now you have Instagram TV that is monetizing, and then also people are just using this space online. After, after you get a following as a social media influencer, the um, there's just so many things you can do. Even if it's not even about money, if it's just about connections, if it's about just uh, you know just meeting people. So you know, I think that one of the things that a lot of people don't, uh, and it's flexible. Obviously, you work as much as you want. Um, I have goals every month. Um, I could tell you in person, it's not to shit on anybody, but, um, you know, I've made like every year. Uh, if you want to talk about euros over 120,000 euros in 2018, over 130,000 euros in 2019, if you want to put it in that perspective, you can put it in U.S. dollars. And um, some of this work could be considered, I don't know, part to full time. Uh, so the thing is, is that uh, as, as black men, we have a serviceable community, even podcasts like this. Uh, people find value in it. People will listen to it. There are people in certain podcasts uh, that have such a following that they're getting $5,000 per podcast. 
Uh, imagine that, right? Uh, they have such a following, five thousand um, dollars. One of the things that we were trying to to do in Africa, and I talked to, I think, somewhat to Brother Gabe and Andre about, was starting a, a black business podcast, and then also focusing on the diaspora continent business that many people are are, are looking into because the, the the need is not there. So what happens on social media? You can fill in voids um that are not there like for example brother bo rakes is has developed a channel that focuses just on um side hustles that's all he does and that is a million dollar business right there and, and it's boom and you start a channel and you, you 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 find a strategy and you go in and automatically you're valuable uh and especially if you have previous experience whatever you do like akiba techie has a channel that focuses on linux and Brother Gabe A has a channel that focuses on securities. And, uh, you know, Steve Dean has a channel that focuses on dating. But we all use, we all come together on this, this great platform. And we have products that we sell. We have uh, certain ways you can support our products and stuff. And this is, for all of us, another stream of income that might not be, uh, like, you know, Steve has the, you know, Amazon. And then he comes on, he has his products. This is, you know, get, same thing with Andre Hatchet. This is, this is the internet is a, a, a big business world for us, right? And it allows you the money to do um, so many different things. Now we're able to get into the African market now and we're able to get into different things. And I'm able to step up the, the content and I'm able to, to go into different things that I couldn't go before because I'm growing with the market. I'm growing with the business. So I just want people to understand that uh, black content is a money that grows on trees. I hate to say this, but I hope you brothers don't 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 get, get upset when I say that. Uh, people don't want to deal with black people or deal with black issues or deal with black content or deal with that in the, in, in the social media. You, you're missing out on millions of dollars. Uh, so, and we need help. We need uh, people to come and create content for our black men. We need more people to come in uh, and develop more ideas uh, because we, to be honest, uh, there's so much money on the table that we all can't get it. Uh, I'm just being honest with you, right? We need more brothers to come in and build the, the infrastructure and connect people and bring in people that have more ideas. Uh, you know, I work with uh, Dr. Kenyon Meadows, MD. I work with uh, 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 Antoine Wade, Andre Hatchett. I've worked with Mediocre to Tourism Reviews. Um, and all of us have some other source of income, but this is all side hustle that helps us all. So we, and this is a business that's booming, right? So we, if you're a guy that wants to do this, um, get in the business, you, you know, because you, you can get in the business rather cheaply if you have experience. And if you hang around us, then, you know, like I said, one, one thing is uh, Brother Bernard Riley. Brother Bernard Riley has a full-time job and every morning he streams and uh, not pocket watch or anything, but I'm pretty sure he's doing $200 a day, $300 a day uh, for just streaming, holding a stream. Um, that's how good the metals for market is right now. So probably $10,000 a month for showing up for three hours a day. That's that's what some guys are doing right now. So if you don't oh, believe the money, the money is there. Right. 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 What'd you say? And I remember Brother Bernard, um, I don't know him personally, but, but he does them. It seems like he does them every day. And, yeah. And the thing about building an audience, so say, this is what a lot of people go wrong is that they think it comes overnight. Now, some people just have that it factor and, right. uh, and it pops off in two, three, six months. Some people, for me, it takes uh, two, two, three years to pop off. But yeah. If you put in enough time and if you're consistent enough, things are going to pop off for you. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a big point that Steve the Dean had brought up is that whole idea of really evaluating the amount of time that you yeah. have to put into a particular side hustle or hustle or any type of of of, of job or work work right. opportunity. You really evaluate that because I know that in the real estate business, one thing that I started off doing was that I was doing all my own property management. Let me tell you, I I, <laughs> I used to go to these houses. Listen, that's not fun. My first house, you know about the Detroit real estate market, Andre. Like you go to these houses, some of them are in very bad shape. I I born and raised and grew up in Detroit, so you know I knew the different areas. My first one was in a pretty bad area, pretty rough area. So I started looking at. It, I'm like, okay, I'm going here. You know, every day or every month after work, these people are seeing my my vehicle. It's on a dead end street. You know, they they like I'm like I'm collecting cash. I mean, I'm putting myself at risk and I'm also tiring myself out from going to the whole other side of town in order to, to, to collect rent. And not only that, I got to deal with all the issues of the of the of the tenants. So one thing that I did is that I evaluated the time that I had to put into this and I hired a property manager and I haven't looked looked back since. The only thing I look at is the money that he deposits into my account every month. 
That's the only thing I look at. That's the only thing. So, yep. There's something else that uh, these young men need to understand is that when you start your business, you're going to not, do not touch your money. Don't whatever you bring in. Don't just go off and start spending it. You're going to have you're going to have to you have to take some out. There's a thing called taxes that you're going to have to pay. And some people don't think about that. People think that I just I just get a business in and I get to keep all the money. You're going to have to take taxes out of your business, number one. But number two, when you start to make income, don't start buying and just start messing your money off. I would say save your money because you. I'm telling you, when it hits, when around April 15th comes, excuse me, when April 15th comes, you're going to have to pay those taxes. And I don't know who was saying it, but he's right. Uh, I had to pay like 25000 I think it was like 25000 uh, like court. I mean, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You got to pay out. It's not just you receive the, the higher your bracket is, you're going to have to pay more money and stuff. So just, I just want to say. I can't even add into that point, adding even another dimension to it is that you really want to get it to the point where your business is paying for itself. Yes. So one thing I was mentioning is that my nine and five has been funding my real estate business. Now my real estate business funds itself to the point where I've 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 been able to after building up uh, a certain amount of equity in the homes that I purchase, you're able to because a lot of times and I share this on Ramil's channel. A lot of times people will refinance their mortgage when they come to a point where uh, they can't keep up with the payments or they 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 need to get some money for something immediate. But you can also refinance investment property. You can take out a certain amount of equity from that investment property and you can use that in order to reinvest in that particular business. So so I have a particular property where I'm able to pull over forty thousand dollars out of out of from 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 equity out of that that home. And that home is free and clear. I don't owe anything on it. So I'm able to take out that forty thousand uh, dollars from a financial in in institution uh, at a five percent rate every month and and i'm able to reinvest that in the business to acquire more property and just like steve d was saying put money aside for taxes and right. being able to really expand my business and allow my business to pay for itself i mean you want your business to pay for your for itself rather than you continually mm -hmm. having to come out of pocket for that business yeah and um to piggyback off of that um, Y'all guys know one of my big areas is automation, which is the future of the world. Black men, nobody really is doing this right now. This is going to take the world by storm. If you can create a business or come some kind of service, you can make a lot of money off of what's about to happen in the next couple of years. And the world is trans. The world is moving towards this. Um, everything is being automated. And there are a lot of manual jobs and everything that's going to be eliminated. So. As you know, I was in college when the first economic thing happened in 2008. This is the first time in my life when I've been able to be on the back end of something and say, hey, something is going to happen that's going to propel the world forward. And I finally get to get a piece of it. But black men, please try to find a way to get a van and with artificial intelligence, automation. All of this stuff is about to take center stage Find a way to get some kind of business or some or get your hand in to get some kind of to get some of the money because the money is going to be there if you're mm -hmm. just providing a service to a company or to individuals it's psychologically yeah. it's psychologically been proven people do not like to think for themselves they want people to tell them what to do find right. a way to tell people i watched a documentary on costco costco is the rival of sam's club sam the guy that owned costco said we don't give the customers a choice. We have one selection. If there's, uh, I'm looking at a bottle of smart water on my table. You don't have a choice to choose one smart water. We sell smart water by the 10 pack. Either you buy a 10 pack or you don't. And that's how you have to look at consumers. You cannot give them a choice. Yeah, there's, there's, there's uh, stream, what we call, I call, uh, I call it streams of income. I mean, you, you, you there, there's so many opportunities, and you, and like you were saying, it's automated. You don't have to think about brick and mortar anymore. You don't have to think about I have to get a piece of land. I've got to pay. You don't have to do that anymore, especially with these apps. Um, I remember even in the '90s when I was do, I was a gopher. I, I started a, a concierge service. I would go around to uh company business companies, and um, like you were saying, these uh presidents, CEOs, CFOs, they're lazy as hell, and they want people doing things for them. And I was like, okay, I 
I got, a, got anything. Hey, look, yeah, I'll be your gopher. I'll pay your bill. I'll uh, I'll walk your dog. I'll house sit for the uh, electrician to come in. And that was a great money. But also, as as time progressed and everything hit, auto, like you're saying, automatic and, and the internet. You've got Instacart where you can go shop. When rich people are lazy. Here's the thing: they're lazy, so they want people doing stuff. So you can go this thing called Instacart, where you just go grocery shopping and make a bunch of money for people. They've got jobs where you can walk dogs now and make money. I mean, and again, it's just a start. Don't look at it as a end all be all. Look at it as okay, I'm gonna bring in some little bit of money here, and that's fine. Okay, and then that'll be one row of income. Okay. What else can I do? Because there's so many apps out there and so many different things that you have. You can have a streams of income coming mm-hmm. in. Man. No, no, no. Awesome. Awesome point. Let me just uh, uh, shout out a uh, shout out to uh, brother De- uh, Alfonso. I'll check this later tonight. The DeWan trade. I just subscribed to your channel, but I'm going to check it out. Trading has been a powerful skill for me. Flexible, unlimited earning and portable skills. You know, let me just talk about this just very briefly and I'll give the mic up. And I want to talk to the brothers out there. If you if you are hearing me, uh, press one if you're if you're uh, in the chat. Um, one thing that Brother Gabe was going to do a show on and me and we didn't do it um, was called uh, a lot of people waste their time on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. It's something like that. And, um, you know, I still don't know if we're going to do that, but we probably should probably should talk about that. Right. But I want to talk about the power of, uh, of, of, of YouTube is whatever, um, community that you want to be a, a part of YouTube and Facebook groups and things like that allow you the opportunity to join in with, uh, certain people, certain levels of entrepreneurs, guys who do, uh, there's even YouTube channels. I think Steve had one before when he was, uh, you know, doing the Uber or Lyft thing. Yeah, people that do that and people that give tips on Uber and Lyft are Amazon Freight, are people who are in the trucking industry. Uh, you, you know, guys can consume the kind of content that they want more so now than ever. Like one of the one of the communities that I'm in right now that I watch is hardware. Because uh, listening to Brother KC yesterday, you know, I do know now that bringing hardware to Africa as far as computer builds is a, is a really, really big business and is a really good business. So mm-hmm. I, I focus myself on, well, what sells in the build? Is it uh, i9? Is it an AMD 3950X? You know, is it, uh, you know, a 2070 RTX cards? Is it 2080? I didn't know any of this stuff like six, seven months ago, but I'm in that community now. And now I can gauge how much a machine like that can make me in a year. Um that's where I'm at now. And what I want to say is you can use these YouTube uh, podcasts or, or content for the better, the betterment of, you, of yourself, your own self-development. I know when I was in, you know, uh, basic sciences, I was looking at move biochemistry. I was looking at, uh, you know, Khan's Academy for, for, for medical sciences. You can consume what you want to consume on here. At, at, it depends on you. But you also have the time to say, you know what, I want to be in this community. I see Brother Dre with the real estate school, or I see Brother Gabe with the tech, and I see, you know, uh, Dr. D with the automation. You know, th- this is the community I want to be around. And then you get in that community, and that community can start to help you build a network. And, and then you can start to understand more things. And then, you know, so th- that, that's how a lot of other groups help their people make money. So we we want to encourage, and that's how I made a lot of I'm, I'm be honest, I made a lot of money by knowing people in networks. Like the more people that I know, I can hit Andre on WhatsApp. He'll give me a topic, and that topic might do a thousand dollars. And I mean, I'll maybe be real. I'm gonna be real, Andre. Andre might give me a to- uh, doctor. Doctor uh, uh, Dix, he's on the uh, podcast right now. Doctor Dix gave me a topic one day. I was like, man, I don't even really believe in this topic. This is the best show we've ever had. That show brought in like six hundred dollars, but just one topic. So this is what we're trying to tell you guys. That it's it's beneficial that that you uh, you know get into involved in these communities or create them that help you make money. They're all around. You have them in the tech communities, you have them in the hardware communities, software communities. You have them in Linux now. You guys have the truck driving community, and then here's another thing too that's monetizing the prison community. Believe it or not, the prison community, the black male prison content community, is the one of the is, is a is a million dollar community right now. Guys who come wow. out of prison have made a way for themselves on social media. While understand. other people are talking about nothing, you got the prison guys who are making more than all of us. That just depends on what you want to do with your community. So, guys, just understand that um, going forward, that you can use this platform to do whatever you want and consume what you want if you decide to do so. 
Hold on, somebody in the background, they have a noise. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. There, there are two important things that I like to say. Number one, and this is going, it's going, it's going to hurt some feelings, but oh, the people that you hang out with are really the reason why a lot of you guys are holding yourself back. You need to be with like-minded people that are trying to push the envelope be, um, beyond the fringe and trying to do more with themselves. You need to start rubbing elbows with people like that because the start, the more you start to do that, the more you start to see things that you didn't see. Like, like let me just give you for instance. I I, I got stock. I'm talking about stock for a second. I got stock and oil and other things, right? But if, if me, if I didn't rub elbows with a certain, bl- and, 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 oh, she's black. If I didn't rub elbows with a certain <laughs> black, <laughs> I, I rubbed elbows with this black man that told me years ago to start watching this program called Shark Tank. I'm like, why, why would why would I watch a bunch of billionaires? That would, how is that gonna make me money? And he was like, well, look here, it's gonna make you money because. The sharks are going to only invest in things they know they can make money out of. So mm-hmm. the role of the game is, is that you learn about the companies they invest in. And then when they release stocks at a low price, you buy in low because the sharks are never going to buy any. They're never going to invest in any product that they don't believe in. They always thinking about flipping their money. So when a mm-hmm. shark buys a or a shark um, signs somebody, whatever they, whatever they call it, you got to look at that company and wait till they get to a certain point because they all had this thing called after the tank where these people, you know, my first year I made $10 million. My next year I made this million. And you got to keep your eyes on those companies because when they start to release stocks and go um uh, public, it's, I'm not trying to get too stock in it, but when they go public, yeah. they start releasing stock, you can buy low and know that you've got a shark behind the company that's going to make sure it stays afloat. That's that's all I want to say about that. I mean, I want to say something about that too because I think that this is a, a not a very well known game as it concerns stocks and employment. So working for a lot of these large, uh, uh, like these tech tech companies or a lot of companies in general, even consulting firms, one thing that you can negotiate as a part of your salary are called RSUs. Which is uh, which, which are which stands for restricted stock units. So you're literally buying stock in that particular company, and a lot of times these RSUs come in the form of a four year vesting period. So you can say, okay, I have a base salary of 150k, but I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of RSUs which vest over the period of four years. After and and it's something that companies use to keep to keep you invested in staying at the company. Because after your first year, you get 25% of those RSUs. So you'll get $25,000 uh, that'll be added to your salary or $25,000 that you can keep in stock of that company. And one thing that happens is that a lot of times people stay with companies like Google and Amazon and Facebook because their stocks do very well. They do very well. And people can literally retire off a hundred, two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of RSUs in that company, especially if this company is doing is doing well. So even the nine to five individual can get involved or like or the or the technologist <clears throat> or the consultant, they can get involved in a stock game for working for a company by negotiating RSUs with those particular companies. And that can be an advantage, something that, that you can hold on to and retire on after you're done. Like I know somebody who he's on uh, YouTube and his, his, his name is the tech, the tech lead. He has over a million dollars in RSUs with Google uh-huh. and face and Facebook. I mean, it's possible. So, you know, that's that's just another stock for the nine to five or the tech, mm-hmm. tech person. Okay. No, yeah. great, great information. And, uh, a brother right here. Uh, let me just say, uh, brother, Starship Architect, please don't say in the panel, the new economy demands products delivered same day, preferably within a few hours, especially large cities. Shout out to Steve the Dean mm-hmm. uh, uh, doing that. Who, you want to say something else, brother Gabe? Who else want to um, on that? One thing that we're overlooking is, um, I've been seeing it with, uh, with the school system, is we're overlooking rural areas. Rural areas have a lot of money in them. And I was looking at the news up in Detroit. One of the biggest problems in the state of Michigan is they don't have enough bandwidth to get the internet service to the students. And 
that's a big thing in uh, guys' electricity. Since uh, Brother Gabe is an engineer, he'll know about three-phase and two-phase systems and AC oh, and yeah. DC. So one of the big things, O'Shea, you know, you say the power goes out of Africa all the time. Um, I know about three-phase systems oh, and AC and DC and the res- and uh, I can't think of the thing, the transformers and everything because a job that I did before, I had to learn about all of it. So Africa, I know o- O'Shea has a big problem with con- continuous electricity. And I'll be stepping it down and then stepping it up with the transformer. So that's something OJA down in the future you can look at bringing electricity to Africa. And the thing is with Detroit, Michigan, a lot of rural areas like Detroit, where I live at, don't have enough Internet service. And to run the Internet in certain rural areas, you can run it by fiber or sometimes they'll put repeaters in the line. But with the advancements in technology, they can run single mode fiber or multi mode fiber. So these rural areas that cannot get Internet service, you could come in and say, hey, I can run the fiber for you. Somebody runs it to a switch. We put it into a Cisco switch and we run. And these people here have a 100 megabyte network. People overlook rural areas. Rural areas really need more help in the metropolitan areas. And it is a lot of money because the thing about a rural area, you can make more money in a rural area sometimes because the people don't have any other alternative. If you come there and say, this is the service I charge for, they will pay it. And you get a county commission or you get a chamber of commerce. That's another thing um, you can find out businesses. Become a member of a chamber of commerce and they can say, we don't have this business here. You could make a you could be a gold mine for that area. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. People overlook a lot of things that um don't have notoriety or aren't sexy or, or white collar per se. And that actually leaves a lot of people broke. A lot of broke people have the biggest pride ever. I've heard some people say in the same conversation about how much they're struggling, they are feeling life, and shoot down so many options because of freaking pride and ego. I'm like, fam, you you don't have any money. <laughs> That's the, and your and your ego's inflated. It's the it's it's a real backwards ass psychology. So to get ahead in life, it it will often require a whole lot of not pretty stuff and a whole lot of not pretty hours and stuff you might be overly qualified for in your brain, which is the same, right? But if it will get you to another level, it's a win, it's a victory. So focus on the end result, not the immediacy all the time of what you're actually doing to get there. Is it gonna get you that um, house in Detroit? Is it gonna get you that building? Is it gonna get you the studio? like Steve Dean got in his crib, right? It takes effort and hustle and grind work and what I call grunt businesses or grunt jobs oftentimes to get to that next level. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to also uh, make sure guys out there when y'all doing this, that this is, it's dirty. They're long hours and uh, you got to get off of YouTube. You got to get off of Facebook. You got to get off of Instagram. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that you have to uh, really focus on and, and that's that's where the success comes in for a lot of people because they are willing to do the things that most people won't do, and they're willing to make that money. It's just a it's like a like I say a hustle mentality. You just I, I remember when I was uh what six years old I I didn't have any marbles. My mother told me I couldn't get any marbles. So when I was in Virginia, uh, then we I was on the naval base. So I went to the commissary, started bagging groceries, so uh, cutting grass. Uh, I had a power washing job where I got dirty. So I, 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 I always look to understand that you're going to get dirty in this and the hours going to be long and strenuous. And you've got to. And again, I don't know if you ever talk about family or uh, and things like that or, or your friends or going out. All that stuff has got to be put on the back burner. You have to mm-hmm. really make sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't worry about being called lame because at the end of the day. A big house for now. All the folks that were called lame are at home making money while all the cool people are somewhere broke. <laughs> I'll be lame sitting in a 5,000 square foot home with a half a million dollars in a bank account. You can call me whatever you want to call me. Because black men like Stephen Dean saying, you got to get from around people. Man, that's lame to invest in stuff. Well, five years down the line where you grossing $250,000 a year, it's not, they're mm-hmm. not going to think it's lame. They're going to come to you with an open hand. Hey, cuz, can you loan us some money? And you find that you got to get from around people with short minds. If they mm-hmm. if they're thinking mm-hmm. this till the end of the week, you need to get from around that. 
And I'll go ahead and say this. Jurgens and X videos and Spank Bang need to be your best friend doing this. You don't need to worry about the women. No. Right. You need to be focusing. Sorry, y'all. I just heard about those websites. I don't know about them, but you know. Um, <laughs> man, I just heard about them too, man. What's going on? <laughs> man. I know that's right. Let me, yeah, let me, go ahead. What would you want? Who wants to say that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It just takes extreme focus, and uh, that's all I got to say about that. Oh, no. And thank you to Brother Travars Wiley uh, for, for the super chat. Also, let me say this um, about the thing about like, so I have a buddy, right? And he's, he's not a, one of my best friends is a Filipino guy that I grew up uh, like in the black community, right? But he's an awesome seller. And uh, this is a true story. Th this guy, I mean, he can sell anything. Um, and so, especially if you are a person that is like really good at sales and you can sell my buddy, that's why it's always good. Let me tell you brother something, right? It's always good for black men to speak and talk to each other. That's why I learned also from uh, brother Andre Hatchett, like brother Andre Hatchett brings on some of the, like the, the most talented black entrepreneurs um, but that, 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 that you can get. So that's why it's good to watch Andre Hatchett's channel. Cause you're going to see people that you never see anywhere else. So there's two things going on, right? Uh, the sneaker community is huge in America. People spend big bucks on sneakers, right? So my boy was selling solar, and um, that that industry was go not not doing so well. And he ran into uh, his godfather, which is a black dude. He was like, "Yo, man, my my son is uh you know doing really well." He's like, "What's your son doing?" He's like, "My son is selling um shoe cleaner." He's like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, tennis shoe cleaner." Mm -hmm. He said, "Yeah, he got a he got one point five million dollars in the bank." He's like, yeah, man, what we'll fuck out of here, right? So, anyways, he goes to see the dude. The dude shows him, man, like, yo, man, I heard about you, heard you good salesman. Um, let me show you something. Pulls up the bank, Bank of America online, 1.5 million dollars liquid. Wow. So the dude has uh booths. One booth is at Arden. Okay, the booth is like two thousand dollars a month, and it's right across from Champs. Uh, so everybody knows what Champ Sports is, right? That's where you know Champs, Foot Locker, Copeland's back in the day. So right across, whenever people go get LeBron's, Kobe's, Jordan's, shoes like that, $300. When you see him coming out the store, you're like, I know you want to take care of them, don't you? Mm -hmm. The shoe cleaner is $8, but he hit them across the bat, $55 a watt for shoe cleaner. Because they already have spent $300, right? Okay, I spent $300, I want to keep these shoes clean. And then once he gets them, he then... Not only do you, it's kind of like the, the old cell phone uh, days, right? You you buy a cell phone and be like, well, man, you want a family plan? Do you, do, do, do your sister got a phone? Your mama got a phone? He then goes through that process and he goes, son, daughter, all of that. Next thing you know, iPad, whoop, $200 sale, right? So what happens with that? Now, this is what I'm saying. The, the split is he get $30 profit for whatever he sells. My man is selling shoe cleaner right now, making $12,000 a month, right? Just in the mall. So with that money, they are now going to open his own store at the Folsom Outlets. Now, let me kind of go back to something else, right? AAU basketball is a huge thing. He's telling me this, right? I mean, this, this is my boy. So what they do is they organize the AAU basketball games, do tournaments, charge the people $5 a month, uh, to get in. Every team pays $250, and then they operate the snack bar. Now, the snack bar, everybody been to AU basketball. Look, Steve getting, he, he already know what we're talking about. Because, you know, Steve will be selling them little kids water for $30. <laughs> they are making $7,000 profit in a weekend, selling hot dogs, selling waters, selling Gatorades, all of that. So what the first thing they do is they hit you, they, they get the they get the uh, the gym, $1,500. They then know the teams in the area. They pay them $20. They buy the trophies and all that shit. Then they go and then they hit them again at Costco. They go spend three, four hundred dollars on like on, on all of that food shit. And then they and then they hit them niggas across the motherfucking uh, brains with 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 the AAU shit. And then if he's probably lucky, he might bring the shoe cleaner there, and hit him again. All of this is creating this side hustle income, and you know that niggas love basketball. That yeah. I mean, this is what's going on right now, right? And I got to bring him on because he got so much game. And so now you're talking about. You know, they do the AAUs twice a month, right? AAUs twice a month. Every snack bar they do is $7,000 profit per AAU tournament. Per. that's We're not talking about entrance fees and, you know, all of that. Once they pay the refs, 
They're leaving there seven thousand dollars liquid. He get a snack bar at these seven hundred dollars. Tell her, you know, God bless you. Boom. But these are these are side hustles that people are doing. So don't get it twisted like niggas ain't out here getting this money. Yes, they are. So I just dropped a little bit of game on I'm with my partner on here. He gonna lace y'all for real. In the sneaker industry, in the snack bars, and there's no reason why black men can't do both of those because don't nobody know sneakers like y'all know. Facts. I was on a panel yesterday, uh, a business panel with um, homegirl from Sacramento, and some other business guys, a real estate dude. Okay. Homeboy came on a panel or on yesterday during his segment. He makes he makes probably a few hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars a year flipping domain names. Woo. So, so he'll buy good domain names and or Twitter hit and, and, and or Twitter handles, and he'll have companies either buy them from him or give him stock options for them. And he's crushing it off of domain names. This is legit one of the top. So, so the, 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 so the guy on right now as my friends join. He made six figures selling T-shirts last year. T-shirts last year. He, he made six figures selling these shirts last year so this is really the age of what are you going to do about it and you we said earlier about spending all day on youtube people spend well here's why youtube is great and dangerous because it's a great place to hide out from um accomplishing your goals it can get you high off of enthusiasm because you're watching all these people and you're staying busy per se because you're, you're entertained and you get nothing done but you're entertained the whole day grown men seek entertainment after the work is done and, and and that has to be like a mantra in the community have your fun have your you know have your fuck shit time whatever after you get some money coming in after you get some stuff done don't just get high off of fun and entertainment and you out here doing nothing it ain't cool no 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 straight facts straight facts anybody want to add in on that uh yeah mm -hmm. Real, real quick, like the people high off of that stuff is a lot of people look at, at like for instance, O'Shea, they'll look at you and they'll say, "Well, I want to do what O'Shea's doing," but they don't look at the time that you put in to get mm -hmm. what you have done, and that's one thing uh, a lot of people don't do. They 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 want the quick fix. They want all the bells and whistles, the the uh, the, the pat on the back and everything. But sometimes when they see the work that has involved, they're like, "No, nah, man, I'm good, man." I don't, I don't. <laughs> And what, yeah, you, no. ahead, movie, what you was talking about real quick is movie theater hustling. Uh, as you know, you go to the movie theater, you pay a lot of money. You go into there, you got to buy the snack bars. And one thing you forgot about the AA is when they travel, they get cake on that. The traveling. They, they, you haven't even mentioned, them. you know, the tournament. The tournament brackets, yeah. when they when they travel, they get caking up on that. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's just it's just so much opportunities out here. And then let me let me just say this as far as, um, you know, guys who are, um, you know, like e e even with the, the 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 podcast industries that are coming out now, um, you know, even that like I think that me and, and shout out to Gabe and, and, and I will I will give him, you know, as much credit as I can, because he's the one that really convinced me that I need to be here. Gabe has his way of doing things. He don't necessarily <laughs> come out and mm -hmm. uh, chew me out. I see him do it to other people. But he, he has his way of letting me know that, uh, you know, I need to be on the job. Right. And so I respect my elders, man. Like I always <laughs> learn. No, but for real, like I always learn, like you got to approach uh, people that are more your senior in a certain way where you're not telling anybody what you, you don't tell them what to do. Like, like my uncle, let me tell you, my uncle used to punch me in the mouth if I used to try to tell them what to do. I need to approach them in a way to get the message across without being aggressive. But go ahead. But, but he, he he knows uh, he's very smart, right? And what he what he what he taught me is that, um, in so many words, that you know your your content that you were doing on the Sunday Rumble that was fun, but um, you know this is this was more of a, a, a opportunity. And um, and it was it was more sustainable, and that's how we were able to get more guys over serious. Although we don't always get the best of numbers, but I I, I do want to tell you brothers to look at what you know because we want to give black men more uh, autonomy. And for me, I always look at uh, if I'm going to monetize something, then I can monetize where I know 
is underserved, which is where I'm, which is where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more familiar with. So I'm in Africa, <laughs> right? I, I deal with African American content, and even somebody like Steve, who doesn't necessarily deal with black issues on his podcast, but this opens the door for him to come in. What's up, Pastor? It's opened the door for him to come in and, and talk about these side hustles from this perspective, and it just opened in a lane where different people can meet each other. We could talk about different things. Uh, like yesterday, we got a lot of knowledge from Brother KC, the Nigerian American guy who has tractors and stuff like that in Nigeria. Uh, you know, you have a brother here that he buys tax properties and flips houses. Uh, we, he might be on the show one day. So we we encourage the brothers to, you know, look, look, look for things also um, that are underserved. Right. And I can tell you right now, anything black related, black male related is always going to be underserved. Right. So we have a, a, a big opportunity in this area to create content that's not here. You know, um, and, and and people appreciate it. It will give you longevity. I mean, I never got to worry about like last month, um, last month and the month before were the best months I've ever had, despite the power going out 25 percent of the time. I remember my brother simple to pee. He called me um, and he he needed for me to uh, he wanted me to do a show with, uh, with, with freeze. He don't mind me sharing that. He's like, yo, bro, can you do the show today? And um, we had just had like 32 hours of, of no power. Uh, but yet and still, last month, because of the market that I'm in and nobody really creates this kind of content, I did the best last month. And the month before that was the best month I had before that. So you can have side hustles that target a market that people don't want to serve. So just thinking that also, you know, you might do things and, you you, you know, so, so, so looking at things that you don't see that's being done and you can do that here. Uh, whether you want to create content, whether you want to do other stuff, you can do things. And I, I ain't never got to worry about it being fired from a job. I, I don't never have to worry about money anymore. I mean, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm not the richest person in the world, but for the last five years of my life or four years, I've, there's never been a place I haven't walked in that I couldn't buy anything. And that feels good. Any place, anything. So let's say, for example, Brother Gabe says, we're going to go to the Christian re retreat in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, you know, so <laughs> I can go. I can go whenever I get ready for the la I, I even buy my tickets five hours before the flight go. Cause money ain't an issue no more. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. And I ain't the richest person, but that's where I'm at right now in life. And I'm, I'm there because like I said, it took me, I didn't make a dollar off of YouTube for the first two years. I was building my network. I was learning how this business worked. Uh, I was working here and there. So I encourage you guys that, you know, um, get involved in the networks, build communities around whatever you do. If you're a person that uh, is in the business, like Steve's in the business, maybe you want to create content around that. Maybe you want to, you know, you want to build a community around whatever you're doing. If you build communities around whatever you're doing, you always gonna have money. You, 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 you can't like, don't just do the, you know, build communities around whatever that you do in this day and age. Anybody else want to talk about that? And just like you were talking about, or like we were talking about before we went, went live is that just that, just that that ability to not have to worry about finances, uh, it allows you to be able to branch out to other things, especially when you start bringing children to the world. Like those kids will have resources that you don't have to worry about getting yeah. to your next buck. You just have to worry about bringing them up in the best environment possible or you don't have to worry about competing with women. Like I don't I don't compete with my wife for finances because she knows that I always make more than her. And I told her that I said, "Listen, you get with somebody." <laughs> I said, "Listen, you get with somebody who will always make more than you." All right, all right. So you don't have to worry about none of that. So you know, I think that those that not to say finances are everything, mm -hmm. but finances are something that you can handle early with your your personal business or your side businesses, where you don't have to worry about those additional stressors in life. So yeah, it's kind of my perspective on it. Let me let me ask you a question. This is a good question, right? Um, so brother Gabe, I'll ask you and I'll ask everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in such situations, uh, what up, love see? That's my brother right there out of Dubo. What up, engineering cannabis? Let me ask you this. Shout out to brother Love Seat. Uh, I'm bringing the thirst box back from your brother. Um now in in in, 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 in with, with talking about side hustles, I know brother Love Seat, he also has a really good one. Shout out to his shoe business, right? Shoe cleaner. I was just talking about that, right? Love C. Shorty has a, a, a sneaker business in which he refer, uh, refurbishes shoes that sell on eBay. So shout out to the Love C. Shorty. Um, let me ask you this, Brother Gabe. If you're a person looking to get into a side hustle business, but you don't really know people, um, and what is the best way to get some sort of mentorship 
that you might know, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the some of the ways that you can, you know, reach these potential incomes on the side that you can build. How, how do you get uh, how would you go about looking for the industries or the incomes? What would you do? I think I have a twofold answer for that. Number one is the one that I always throw out there is as it concerns LinkedIn. LinkedIn, people are pretty much telling you what they do, the history about how they got to where they got. And they also have an inbox that you can reach out, out to them in. Now, the worst that can happen from reaching out to somebody who you see that you want to get into their industry, the worst that can happen is them saying, saying no or them not responding to your messages. But it's always another one of them <laughs> somewhere on LinkedIn. So I think that that's a great resource to find professionals who are doing what you desire to do whether it be side hustle or or um, full time nine to five type of business. Number two is really the the can the Kevin Samuels type of model where he talks about reaching out to business consultants, people who uh, who specialize in getting people up and running in certain businesses. So I'm sure that uh, Brother Drake, he has his uh, he 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 pretty much is a business consultant. He has his. Uh, mobile notary business, but he is able to branch off and really be able to train a force of individuals in order to do what he does uh, in their own sphere of work. So so I think that's that's another one is reaching out to consultants in your particular in the industry that you desire to get into in order to really get you started. Right. Where you don't have to go through all those potholes. You don't have to go through those loopholes that you don't know of. Rather, you can go straight to a business consultant who can mm -hmm. really get you up and running. So one, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. reach out to people who are in the industry that you're looking at getting into. And two, reaching out to business consultants to help you really jump over some of those those hurdles that a lot of people run into when they don't know about that business. Wow. I, I really got to. <laughs> that's a really, really powerful answer. Anybody else want to go? Uh, yeah, real quick. I would say be a sponge. Humble yourself and be a sponge. Uh and and come up and like uh, I don't know who was saying that about the uncle, you know, older people. You gotta you gotta respect the person that where he's at and realize you're not there. So humbling yourself and asking questions and not questioning the person that's giving you the information. Uh, number one, for me, I will always tell guys. Um, again, you got to learn how to change your thinking and you got to change your language and you got to be around people that have the language of yeah, I don't, you know, their their complaints if there's even a complaint that I don't get much sleep. There's no sleep in this game. This is this is 25 hours a day, uh, eight days a week, and even on Sunday. So you you got to get around people who talk like that, and you got to watch shows that push the, what you want uh, or find people like you know like the LinkedIn and stuff like that. But you got to know what you want, or you got to say what can I do? What can what am I good at that I could sell? Because some of you guys who can draw very well. You don't understand, or you having uh, this should break your brain. The 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 subject of uh, cartoons for young black boys, or superheroes for young black boys, or uh, books for girls. You know, it, 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 there's a market puppet shows, um, yes. cartoon. I mean, it, it, it's a wide range of what you can do, but you got to know what you're good at. But also, be honest with yourself. This YouTube thing ain't for everybody. Cause you just cause just because you can turn on a camera doesn't mean you can draw people in by what you do. So right. so so what I'm saying for y'all guys, be honest with yourself, take an honest assessment, but know what you can do. Look at your skill, your skill sets, and say how can I use that to get where I want? And that okay, start there. That's not the ceiling, but that's a starting point. So mm -hmm. how am I gonna get there? Then you gotta come up with a plan and idea, but also. The side hustles that you've been getting from these men, these are things to, to fund towards the business, not for pleasure, not for clothes, not for shoes and fun. This is all that got to be about business. You got to be business mother, excuse me, business mind, excuse my language. You got to be business minded. And if you ain't business minded, you don't get ate up by the business because there's somebody out there that wants what you have and is willing to work that much harder. Mm -hmm. so just um, no, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Doc. Go ahead, Doc. I would say you gotta look, you gotta look like you want to become successful. Um, in the words of Kevin Samuels, image is everything. You can't come out there dressing sloppy, looking sloppy. You have to look like you're already the part. And a lot of black men make the mistake. Say you want to get into being an entrepreneur, 
you got to look at your image in the mirror. You come up, you want to approach, approach a businessman when you're not even dressed like one. People are going to think you're a joke already from the get-go. So that's a big mistake that a lot of black men make. Well, they got to accept me for who I am. You know, you want to find a mentor to help you out. They need to say, when they shake your hand and look at you and say, this guy is serious. Because they get, millions, I'm not going to say millions of people, but they get numerous people a day trying to sell them business ideas or wanting them to mentor them. Make sure you're serious about it. And as uh, Steve Dean was saying, make sure that you can invest this time into this because it is tough. It is hard. And it's going to be a lot of lonely nights. It's going to, you're going to be broke a lot. So you got to remember, you got a lot of work to put in for everything, and it's not going to come overnight. Just remember, if it comes overnight, you're going to lose it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, anything that comes fast in life usually goes fast, and you just have to remember that. Um, black men, just be the image. Be different. Um, just look at how Stephen Dean was talking about Shark Tank. Look at how those guys are dressed. Look at how they talk. Your vernacular is important. You can't you can't come up to a business man, yo, be man. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, that's not gonna get you anywhere. You've already lost the guy already in the first couple of words. You know, the old saying is people could tell how stupid you are by the first couple of words come out your mouth, and they already draw their conclusion by what you say. No, no, I agree. Let me shout out to the the legendary. Uh, Book of Alpha Romney, Doco, Dr. B.O.A. Salute. Oh, top notch topic. That's real talk, Steve. No matter what you're capable of, in order to know where you need to grow. Peace, panel chat. Uh, same question to uh, and go, go subscribe to Doc. Really good channel. Shout out to Black Rhino. My goal is to fin uh, finish my aviation maintenance exams this summer. I want to get in the local trucking for my side. So thank you, brother. Always supporting. Um, uh, brother, brother Andre, go ahead and talk to them, brothers. Uh, what do you think about the, you know, as far as, you know, getting mentorships for uh um or knowing how to get into certain side hustles yeah so as far as mentorships go if you're if you're over let's say early 20s call it coaching because most people who are experts are going to charge you for their time and information if they have to physically talk to you or email you communicate with you so prepare if you're over 21 20 to prepare yourself to have to pay for a certain level of accountability and a certain amount of information. There are people who have literally held themselves back from making an extra two, five, maybe even ten, twenty thousand dollars a month because they don't want to pay the person a hundred dollars an hour for their time or mm. or five hundred dollars for their course. So don't let ego hold you back. Mm -hmm. The brokest people have the biggest friggin' ego. And a lot of times, um, <laughs> other brothers, we don't want to break it up for other brothers because we feel too comfortable too quickly. Look, y'all ain't friends. Yeah, y'all might become friends, but y'all ain't friends. Just because you watch Steve or Gay's videos, it doesn't mean that y'all are friends, right? So mm -hmm. approach them on a business tip, and if things evolve me, I become cool from there. That's cool, but don't approach it on, on I'm going to get the information first. I'm going to try not to pay because anybody black who's doing public work, they are getting hit up all the time for free stuff. So set yourself apart, and it's so much easier just to pay the person for for the knowledge or accountability you need, and it will set yourself free. I don't know too many people who make over 150 a year who aren't, who, um, as far as entrepreneurship goes, who haven't paid for some kind of coaching, consulting, courses, workshops, and or accountability. So mm -hmm. do it, pay it, get the game, and you'll take it more seriously yourself. Yes. You as the buyer will take it more seriously because you pay for it, which gives you a higher likelihood to um to get ahead. So I mean look, I just ordered some what I would Uber Eats right now. That's why I got my camera because I was eating. No, I was hungry. So <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do Uber Eats for two months to pay for the course of consulting. Shit, mm -hmm. do it. I, I had people who who were hitting me up on Instagram. Hey, um, was the next promo? Was the next promo? I was like, fan, the promo was only a hundred dollars off. You can go out and make a hundred dollars right. if you did some door dash and Google to come back and just come correct, man. Come correct with our right. fellow black men who are experts as well, man. Come correct, come correct. And, and look, man, you'll feel better about yourself. You will feel better about yourself. That's fast right there. No, great information. Let me say this to Brother Love, Cedar. I know BOA don't like panels, but it'll be dope if he came on the hall one time. I got to get Brother uh, Dr. BOA. 
when he's uh when he's free because you know me me and doc uh when we do a show it's enough to save the entire sacramento so you know how we do uh let me just say this for a lot of black men and i, I think i spoil a lot of you brothers uh, with a lot of the free things that I do, right? Um, and that means bringing the, the the content as much as it of it, and 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 holding, bringing a lot of black men uh, together that give a lot of free information, and um, a lot of brothers are are somewhat spoiled about that. And I don't mind doing it because I it's uh, I feel like it's a ministry of mine, if you want to call it that. But um, but but realistically, not everybody is as nice as Gabe A, or not everybody is as nice as Patrick. Or not everybody's as nice as Brother Dre to come in. And I mean, obviously, they, they promote themselves on here, too. But it, and not everybody's that nice. And the one thing that keeps a lot of black men back is that uh, we don't want to pay to play. OK, and that's something that, um, that, that, that that especially when it comes to the, a group of people that look like us, we don't pay to play. Um, I pay to play a lot of money. OK, uh, every month. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what the tune of that is, but I pay to play all the time. Um, one of the things I did even last year, I worked, um, you know, I interned with, uh, you know, African diaspora news channel. Um, and it was more something like an internship. And I learned a lot from that, uh, from being, uh, uh, calling plays on that, on the channel like that. I learned, I can do different concepts and stuff like that. And I want to also talk about, uh, brother engineering cannabis is saying is internships, right? And, uh, Andre Hatch is a big, a, a big, uh, believer of internships. So am I. I take internships with even a big YouTube channel. Now I have 80,000 subscribers. Um, I get, I had 2 million views last month, 1.4 million views a month before. And if a big channel comes to me, I'm working for them for free. Not because, um, and I'm not saying for free, but you know, and the reason why is they have knowledge that I don't have. I can gain something from them. That's going to I'm when I I'm not going to leave the same way that I came. Right. And um, I'm going to learn different things about the business that I was not aware of. So uh, th this is what we want to talk about. Brother, brother, engineering cannabis and shout out to uh, I made a band uh, 40 hours over this week and drivers are scared because COVID. Y'all better hop on. Thank you. Be away. Get me, brother. Oh, I'll definitely go on the email. It's in a study hall. People can make it happen. Doc, we're going to definitely do a show. I will email you right after the show. Um, thank you again, Doc, for all the support uh, as black men. We we need to sometimes if we don't know the business, then we our, our 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 blood and sweat and equity is maybe interning somehow for some people. Uh those things will exist, right? Um John Paul DeJoria owns um Patron and he owns John Paul Mitchell hair care products. And uh before he was up at Redkin and he left with only four hundred dollars and got fired, he had so much level of knowledge of that hair industry, he was able to turn four hundred dollars into one billion dollars. But that's because although he had four hundred dollars in his pocket, he had a billion dollars worth of game. That's why this show is called What the Hall of Game. He has, you know, like a uh, civil to uh, P calls it uncommon information. And 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 you cannot get uncommon information unless you're around people that have things that you just don't have. Um, and unfortunately, you have to pay a cost to get that information many times. I get emails from brothers, man, I love to come on your platform and talk about what I got going. Um, I would love to do this and that, but there's no investment that you have. And, you know, oh man, you need to, you need to message me. I'm a real nigga. We do. You need to, I need, you need to bring me on your show. But for what? Like that, you know, you, you already don't have the right attitude, nigga. I don't even know you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why so many of us as a, a group of men, we are broke because number one, you know, we're not trying to make it somebody, we're not, we're not respecting another black man's time. We expect to get knowledge for free. And that's not how the world works. You know, uh, Gabe and Andre is right. People that, you know, what's the one guy that has the uh, uh, channel called um, Passport Heavy? Uh, Jabril Abrogado. So Jabril Abrogado takes trips all across the world. He's a Nigerian-American brother, but he has a marketing class. You know how much his marketing class costs? It's $6,000 per person for a workshop. Oh, it's wow. no discount. It is $6,000. It is not $5,999. It is not $5,500. It is, nigga, you paying $6,000. That's, yep. that's, that's, that's where we're at. $6,000 or don't talk to me. Okay? And he sells those. I did a, a, a show with Engineering Truth 
who is a Filipino um, a millionaire guy. He, he had me on this show and he came on mine. Um, that, these guys pay that kind of money. And it's not necessarily that they're paying that kind of money because, oh, the information is always so uncommon. But I'm paying this information because I'm in a qu different quality of people that I can't meet every day. Mm -hmm. So it, a lot of brothers are going to have to come off the uh, come off the, 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 the come out their wallet to say, hey, if I want to be around X, Y and Z person and get X, Y and Z information, it costs me. To do this. And you no no words speak louder out you niggas' mouth than your money or your time. In many cases, you're gonna spend both. And if you don't, then you're gonna stay where you at. Because the people are not gonna just be dealing with you for the free. Go ahead, brother Steve. Well, I just want to say this real quick. I gotta go, but what I'm saying, you're right. I don't want people to think at it as paying, look at it as investing. Look yes. at it as you're you're investing your money to get something out of it. And sometimes you're going to have to invest money to get a return. See, you you invest to get return. So uh, if uh, let me give you an example. If you want to get OJ's attention, it's not, hey, yo, what's up and all this other stuff. Uh, donate or show him that, you know what? I don't want you to just give me stuff for free because nobody's going to do that. No, Nobody's going to ever try to just give you something for free because that tells them that you really don't want to work hard for it. But. Yeah, uh, I, I can say I, I'm just saying you've got to invest a little bit of something to get a return on the investment, and that's where these side hustles that everybody was saying come in. That that's where you dip into that fund right there and take that and use that, and you don't you don't touch your money, touch the money that you have on your side hustle to go ahead and say pay homage to and say you know what I appreciate what you're doing. I know this isn't much, but here's five hundred dollars. Here's a thousand dollars. I know it's not much, but um, I like to. And then from that point, that person's gonna know. Okay, this person's serious. Yeah, he's about business. So yeah, let me just. It's very say, similar. But, but oh. let me just say this before uh, Brother Hassani comes on. Uh, you come on and we give with Hassani. There's a um a person that I paid here. Uh, that's a big DJ in this city, and I'm not gonna go into details with the, the business plan. But I I paid like just for him to come talk to me. I gave him five hundred thousand. You got in a shilling. That's about, um, I don't know, $120. It doesn't sound like a lot of money, right? But that's a lot of money for somebody. $134. That's a lot of money for somebody to come and talk to you for two, three hours. And this is a person that's connected and do a lot of stuff. He didn't even expect it. But for the game he gave me, it was worth a, it was worth $2,000, right? But, you know, you got to respect the game and the game respects you. Go ahead, Brother Gabe, and we'll go to Hassan. Absolutely. No, I was going to say that's that, that same model of investing uh, in – People is the same model that very large organizations, corporations take. I mean, when you look at organizations, they do these training certifications. They literally fund your training. Uh, I've, I've like like in cybersecurity, it's a training organization called SANS. I forget what it stands stands for, but they give out very high level training and certification attempts. And do you know how much each one of these certifications costs? Over seven thousand, almost eight thousand dollars. Whoa. For one training and one exam. Whoa. And 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 when they see that you're a valuable employee, they will invest this and keep investing this in you. I'm literally coming up on my fourth one of these training exams. And it's like it just has huh. done nothing but increase my cap capability in order to perform my work. So brothers act like you 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 can't you don't give anything in order to get. But yet, very large organizations they invest in employees all the time in yeah. the, in almost of the tens of thousands in just training people. So no, not Sand as in Storage Area Network. Sands is an organization. S A N S. It's a training. It's a cybersecurity training organization. Oh okay. yeah. Yep. No, no, before we get to uh, let me shout out to Car Designer Chris. Most designers, architects work go work for a major company before on go on their own. Facts nicer. Thank you for the follow our super chat. Go ahead, uh, 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 brother Ali. Uh, peace to uh, everybody in, in the chat, um, and especially everybody, everybody on the panel. Uh, I know I'm coming on a little bit late. Um, I just wanted just to uh, segue really quickly about um, establishing a a side business side business that will make you very profitable, especially if you're trying to quit your nine to five. I don't know if this has been spoken on already. Again, I'm I'm coming on late, but I just wanted just to drop the gem that uh, if you're looking for something that uh, people will pay for, uh, you want to make sure that you want to start looking into the arenas where the job will be convenient for the person that's paying you. And what I mean by that is that, um, for example, 
um, I'm a writer. And so um, I spent a lot of time um, reviewing papers. I have even written some papers, uh, fixing resumes, proofreading, editing. Um, that stuff takes a lot of work. And so that stuff, you know, requires the grit and grind, but it could also be very lucrative. You know, um, I know uh, brothers who do the lawn care service, shoveling snow, um, doing all the, the raking of the leaves, uh, plumbing, uh, basic plumbing. But you want to find an arena where, you know, it's a tedious task for someone else, but it's an opportunity for you because they'd rather pay you for the convenience than them taking the two and three hours to doing whatever it is. For example, um, I know a lot of people um, are just starting to get into the uh, transportation for the elderly, you know, uh, doctor's appointments, going shopping, uh, that kind of thing. You know, if you have a van um, that's dependable, you have insurance, you know, you can make a lot of money going to these nursing homes and saying, hey, I'll take your, you know, uh, your clients to the doctor's appointments and whatever, you know, rather, you know, because Uber and Lyft were getting a lot of those contracts. But you can come right on there with your van. You're dependable. You're local. You know, they know you. It'll be you every time. And so if you're looking for something, you know, to help you get out of your nine to five, go to an arena where the uh, well, the work is tedious for you, but it's convenient for the client because they'll be more than likely to pay for it. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Oh, awesome. Awesome information. Awesome information. Uh, Doc, you want to go uh, 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 weigh in on that? Uh, yeah. Um, well, one thing I got on indeed.com and I'm been working on it. I have until August, uh, guys, if you have a skill set, there are schools now that like their courses written right now. I have until August, I'm getting $750 to write a course, eight modules, something the lady from the school told me you have until August, but I probably have this done by the end of June. So most black men, whether y'all will it or not, you are sneeze. You are a subject matter expert. Use your knowledge to make you money. If you're a blue collar worker and you do construction, they need a course or they need some kind of standard operating procedure on how to do something. It aid to write the stuff. And I know a lot of men will say, well, that's tedious. No, it's not because you are the subject matter expert. The thing is, Writing one course could lead to other places wanting a course written. And the thing is, it brings in revenue. It strengthens your background and more companies will recognize you. And <clears throat> I can't stress that enough to black men. Get out there. Don't be afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. I've written some courses before, but I'm rewriting this one kind of from scratch. And I have a template to go by. But mm -hmm. how I look at it, all they can say is we need you to fix it again. We need you to fix it again. That's how I look at life. How I look at life is if I made a mistake, I can fix it. It's nothing that's going to cause me to lose my job. And you cannot be afraid to fail. A lot of us are afraid. Well, if I make a mistake, things going to go look bad. Fuck that. Put that to the side and say, hey, I'm in this to get better. Take it for what it is and keep moving forward. But I just say get on Indeed. Just go out there for revisions, uh, writing stuff. Oh, another thing, technical writers. Black mm -hmm. men are very technical. We we are some of the most technical people out there because we do a lot of things with our hands. Some right. of black men are electricians, they're plumbers, they're HVAC. Do you guys know the HVAC guy came to the house yesterday the other day? He charged mm -hmm. me three hundred dollars to replace a wire near the compressor. And he said, Man, since the pandemic, we've been wide ass open. He said, We cannot find any, we can't find anybody that wants to do this. And those are things that will never go out of style because mm -hmm. they have to have commercial um, refrigerant. Um, commercial stuff is basically like buildings and refrigerators that keep your food cool. And then you have residential. It's mm -hmm. things like this that we overlook. You can do a, be a part-time HVAC person and make two to $3,000 easy in a week. Um, mm -hmm. Wiring houses. There are a lot of black men in my area that are like master electricians. You have to have electricity ran everywhere in a building. And electricity is one of the things people do not like to mess with because of the potential of it dying from it. And that's some of the things, you know, I wish, you know, black men would just say, hey, I'm technical. I can write this stuff. I can be a teacher. I can do this. I can do that. I have several ways to make money. You know, this don't think about one source of income. Let me let me. Uh, uh, and that's that's a very, very good point. I, I wanted to uh, necessarily not. I guess I can add to 
what he's saying from a different perspective. And that's a very, very great statement by, by Dr. Uh, Dr. D. Um, when I started my YouTube channel, and let's just say, for example, if I want to get into technical writing and nobody knows me, um, what, what I wanted to do, if I want to gain a customer base, the same thing that I did with subscribers before I even think about Patreon or Super Chat, I'm, I'm giving my content out for free. Um, and that's something that, you know, there was another channel that asked me, could I uh, create videos for them? And they would share it. And um, I would create, you know, my own little classic reviews. I would make it specifically for that channel and they would post it and I would get more subscribers and more notoriety, which then brought me uh, more money. Shout out to Brother Dre Ball. And I, I want brothers to look at this is that sometimes when you have a product or a service that you have and you can't necessarily charge or get credibility, uh, a lot of smart people, what they will do is they will try to offer it for free for people that can give a word of mouth or give them a good reputation because a good reputation is worth money. And um, that's what I was doing on YouTube. I, I didn't I didn't uh, for two years. I didn't worry about asking for any money. Um, I didn't I didn't get was I was not concerned about that. Um, even with my, some of my ebooks on NegroMelisford.com, we gave all those ebooks away for free. Uh, my comic that I was trying to establish, Doctor Action. Many of you guys read read that. I, I basically gave it away for free. I wasn't uh, concerned about getting uh, or making any money off of it. I was just concerned that if people liked it, and if I can get to anywhere where people just enjoy and I can get a following for whatever I do, then on the back end I can worry about charging somebody. So for some of you guys, you might need to set up your side hustle because maybe you don't have a market for it at first. But I'm going to tell you what we did also um, with the Uganda Tourism Board. Uh, so I'm a social media content creator. And what I wanted to do was promote Uganda uh, to the world. And so I, I, I went to Lugogo, uh, which is where they're located. And I said, hey, you know, this is what I do. I'm not. They thought I was trying to charge them or have a budget for it. And I wasn't. I said, why don't you let us create some content for you that would, 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 would push your country to the black diaspora through our content mechanism? And um, and we were and we're and we're, and we're currently uh, in the works and doing that. We've done that with a few things, uh, you know, and it doesn't lead to any money yet. But what it does, it says, you know what? These guys can do good work and that could be a referral for us in the future. So a lot of times um, I'm looking at setting up things for myself, not necessarily right now, but I'm looking to set those things up in the future the same way I'm able to do what I'm doing. I can Africa eight times. Right. So I know that if I want to sustain and monetize myself, I need to have some things that are set up if I decide to be here part of the year or if I want to be in the market. So uh, sometimes, brothers, you should you should you should think about um, not worrying about the money right now, but maybe you want to build your reputation. Um, I see a lot of influencers that come on YouTube and see that everybody has a Patreon. So the first video, you already have a cash app and you already have a Patreon, but you don't even know people like your content yet. So you don't hear talking about donate, 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 but you, you not even good. And um, and uh, what you should be worried about is being good. You, you should be worried about having a skill that people want because they can recommend you and you should be able to recommend people all in, in this, that, and the other. So think about this as you're trying to monetize that side hustle, whatever it is. Do I have people that, that can recommend me? Um, do I have a client base? And, 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 and think about those things to get you into a market versus trying to make money up front. Uh, we got O'Shea Linux here. I'm still waiting on engineering cannabis device to connect. Anybody want to uh, uh, add on anything to, to yeah, this? Hop or off, man. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm about to get back to this move, but I appreciate. Okay, it. okay. Thank you, man, for coming on, man. I know you. I know you. You. Uh, you. 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 Been busy, brother. It's, it's not the same without you here. So we'll we'll be looking forward Absolutely. to building the hall with you when you get back. Thank you so much, brother, for coming on. Let, let, let's uh, later. Yep. Let's speak with brother engineering cannabis. And we have uh, one of the original members of the Hall of Game, O'Shea Linux out of Mississippi. Go ahead, Brother Engineering Cannabis. Yeah. Hey, thanks, O'Shea. Hey, everybody on the panel. Um, in terms of side hustles, every side hustle begins with what you have internally, what skill or knowledge you have. Let's look at the big companies. Amazon, the founder, Jeff Bezos, he was a data analyst. He had the skill to basically believe he could build a computer program that basically started with books. Then he grew Amazon into what it is today. Facebook, he was a computer science major in Harvard. He enjoyed computers. He enjoys he enjoyed basically connecting people. He built Facebook based on what he knew. 
every company you start with always begins with what knowledge or skill you start on. And then they move into a side hustle or an idea and then grow it. And it's not grown in a day. It's grown. It takes time to grow it. So, again, anybody who's trying to basically start a side hustle, start with what you know or what you what skill or knowledge you have, if it's in your job or if it's anything. And then the key part of this, after you've identified what skill and knowledge you have, the key part now is finding the problem to solve. That's where the thing is. That's the biggest part. Finding your knowledge, then finding a problem to solve. And that's where the money is. The money is in the problem. And the solution is what your skill or ability is. And that's where the key is. And as I've mentioned all those companies, they found they found their skill and they found a problem and they found a solution to that problem with their skill. A side also can grow over time. And again, on paid internship, currently, currently I'm currently I'm doing an unpaid, I'm trying to do an unpaid in, internship in a marketing in, in, industry just to learn the cannabis industry, marketing industry. And using my skill as a data scientist in the marketing industry. So again, it's the knowledge you have and how to apply it. So again, figure out the knowledge you have, the skill you have, then look at where you can solve the problem at, and then go from there. I'm done. O'Shea? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. So that's that's the biggest part of it. And aside also, this just knowing what what you have, knowing the knowledge you have. That's where that's where the side hustle always begins, and it always ends. Again, I start again, again. What I'm saying, I'm I'm in the cannabis industry. I'm trying to learn about the marketing side of the cannabis industry. I know data science and all that, but I don't know the psychology of marketing the emotional side of marketing, how, even the videography and all that, I don't know that. So I have to go through an unpaid internship. While I have my job and all the stuff I'm doing, just to learn the marketing of it. And then with that, then I can start what side hustle is, with, with what I know, again, with data science and all that. And with the marketing side, I can basically become a marketing agency that focuses on just data itself. But I still need to know what marketing is, how marketing works, what 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 products I need to market, especially within the cannabis space. There isn't enough marketing. Again, there is in cannabis space. There's not enough marketing agencies. I've seen the need for that, but I don't have that skill enough to know what how to run a marketing agency. So I need to know. I need to work in a marketing agency for a couple of months or a year, then move from there. And that's that's the growth I'm looking into. So that's what everybody, sh- if you want to go into a side hustle, figure out where you want to go and figure out what your skill is and go from there. And that's how growth is in the side hustle itself. I'm done. All right. All right. Now, thank you so much. I'm sorry. I went and got some need. Brother, Brother O'Shea Linux, go ahead and drop some knowledge on side hustles, brother. Good evening, y'all. Y'all know who it is. Oh, Salem. It's been a long time, my friend. But I'm glad to be up here again. You How was, y'all? You were the originals of the Hall of Game, one of the OGs when it first started. Well, I, well, I didn't realize that. I thought well, that was something you've been had going on. But um, anyway, look, I, I am glad to be up here with such ex- distinguished guys. I see Gabe done left. But but the rest of y'all, uh, hey, hey, y'all inspired me to do stuff that I've been needed to do. But anyway, let's get up into the side hustle stuff. Look here. I got two side hustles. Oftentimes, that two side hustles, well, one of them oftentimes leads to several other different things. Number one, I'm into computers. So I just had worked on somebody's computer today, helping them um, install Skype on there. So he can, because I think his mother is in... Um, his mother's in a nursing home, if I'm not mistaken. So now they have to sit there and do that Skype thing. I didn't hit him for much at all. Matter of fact, I kind of wanted me something to eat. So, hey, sometimes when you got skills, you can do that. But, look, even stuff like that, 
you can make quite a bit of money off that. Just helping people do small things such as that. I mean, I had to create an email address for them, then go on the computer and sign up to Skype thing. Hey, or sometimes you can just do that just to be helping out, which oftentimes leads leads into bigger things. One thing, remember this: one thing always can lead into something bigger, or lead into. And that's how you kind of have to look look at the situation. And another thing I do is I do the eBay thing. And hey, let me tell you what. <clears throat> Uh, Facebook market is your friend because a whole lot of people be selling a whole lot of stuff that they don't want. Matter of fact, they almost give it away. They almost, they almost give it away. I bought stuff and have gotten my money back two, three times over. As a matter of fact, I got some stuff that I had some friends picked up and they have not brought it back yet. Can y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they got all the quiet. I'm like, man, what? I'm like, good gracious, am I, uh, am I talking to myself? But um, but look, you should always have a side hustle. Cause see, I'm, look, I'm not going to get too biblical with you on it, but there is a verse in the Bible that says, look, look, basically work two jobs because now, so look at, you really don't know how the first, you don't know if the first one going to produce what, it, what you need to do. You don't know that. So you always have something else going on. Always. Cause it, look here, because it's like this. I understand somebody get into the um something they love to do. That's cool. That's real cool. But even in doing that, that doing what you love oftentimes open up opportunities to do a whole lot of other stuff with uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, without taking away from what you're actually doing. Now, the only thing that hurts a lot of people is sometimes they don't want the responsibility, and I ain't trying to go negative, but they don't want the responsibility of doing the boring side of it. The boring side of that stuff is when you have to sit there and, right. and, and sit there and do that paperwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sit there and do that inventory. When you have to sit there and, and you have to sit there and maybe talk to some people about stuff that you just absolutely don't even care about talking to them about. But you do it because it has to be talked about in order to make the whole entire business run smoothly. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I believe you talk, that was one of the other things that um, you were talking about a few weeks ago with the guy that I believe he might be on Cal in California. He had, was selling a whole lot of um, um, record albums and stuff. Right, biology. Yeah, see, he he look. He pointed out some great things about it. look. It's that boring stuff, and it's the responsibility of not knowing. It's the uncertainty of not knowing how your money is gonna go. You know, look at because when you dealing, when you dealing with your own business, doing your own stuff, basically it rises and it falls with you. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. rises and falls. You can't wait. Look, you can't blame. Say your boss didn't pay you. No, you can't sit there and wait for that check to come to you. Cause look at <laughs> why, why one check is. Look at why you look. Why you getting money from one thing? You should always have your mind set on two or three other things that you were setting up to make money from that also. Right. But then, but then what you're doing it itself. Right. And I know I can be a little long winded, but I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna hold you back. I'm not gonna hold y'all too long. I right, look here, but I'm just gonna sit here and I, wherever I can jump in, mm -hmm. I jump in. Okay. Uh, let why I'll be learning. Let me do this right now. Also, I think maybe tomorrow um, would be a good topic. You know, working at jobs that you don't like, but they pay a lot of money. Because I, I think we all been through there, right? You know, we're, we're doing something. Some some people take side hustles to pay off credit, pay off stuff. Um. To fund certain things, I want to talk about something in that topic. But let me ask this question, brother Larry Brown. Uh, he says, "Shout out to the brother." My question is: When you're in a small city, how to enter certain markets that seem to be saturated? Uh, brother, brother Ali, do you have any? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I don't know how to. Uh, you know this this problem I'm seeing all throughout Africa in in, in Uganda people entering the same businesses 
Um, and those people are suffering right now. But what would you say about this, Sonny? You know, you know what, Osha, that's a that's a great question. And uh, brother Larry, here's the thing I would definitely suggest, um, especially when you're in a small town uh, or a small city. Um, I'm from a small city, so I know how it goes. Think of, think about it this way: you have several barber shops in your in your small city. The ones that tend to get the most client base is they have a unique spin to their barber shop. So that barber shop may have, you know, uh, big screen TVs so you can watch the game. Or, you right. know, there was a, I'm going to say where in Detroit, but there was a, you know, a barber shop in Detroit where, you know, the women would cut the hair and they would be, you know, scantily clad or, you know, scantily dressed. Is it and, still going on? Um, actually, I don't know. But, because um, they, they were closed down for a minute, but you have to find a way to, put a unique spin on what right. you're doing. And that's how you would get the customer base. Um, for example, um, it's funny how we talk about saturated markets because think about how the, how the escort market will be quote unquote saturated. And mm -hmm. no one, no one ever thought that a professional cuddler would become a thing. You know what I mean? For, mm -hmm. you know, escorts, some people do it just for the friendship but you didn't have a service where the where the woman could come to your house and just cuddle you for the night, and that's what you would be paying for. You're not paying for no sexual activity. You just want somebody next to you, you know, to keep your bed warm. You, you know, um, you wouldn't think that people would pay for friends. You can there's a there's literally a website called rentafriend.com, and people will pay you to hang out with them, you know, based on your expertise. So all you have to do is every every type of business is a spin-off or a stem off of something else. So even when you think about car washes, car washes, you know, every car wash washes a vehicle, but the reason why there's one particular one that everyone likes is because perhaps they, you know, give you those uh you know, those air fresheners that everybody likes. Maybe they do a free uh towel dry at the end. You know, perhaps they have the fastest service. You would have to find the unique spin that people can get behind in order to, you know, um, make your business stand out. Same thing with food. Taco Bell, McDonald's, Burger King, you know, all of them sell fast food. But what's going to make your fast food the best fast food? And I should have I should have left Taco Bell out because McDonald's and Burger King kind of sell the same things. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, Long story, long story short, all you want to do is find a unique spin mm -hmm. or a unique service in that market in order to say, hey, yes, all these people are in my, you know, are in the same uh, service, but mm -hmm. I provide this and that's what makes us special. Add something and we're going to go to Dr. D. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I'm going to jump in that. Just to add to that. Um, Everything he said is good, and that's absolutely true. But here's the deal. When you look at stuff like that, just think about, think about it like this. Somebody's going to do business with me that ain't going to be doing the business with no one else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, look here. There's enough people. Look here. You are special and unique within your own self. And if we can just learn to harness that with a great attitude, mm -hmm. uh, people can't help but flock to us. That's mm -hmm. been proven. Proven throughout history, even mm -hmm. during slavery. Look, some slaves were so um, good at what they had, what they were doing. A lot of times, look, they just profited the slave master because they had certain skill sets. So, no, no matter what, if there's a thousand, look at there's a thousand loaves of bread sitting in the store. If somebody gonna eat your, somebody gonna eat your brain. Mm -hmm. But. Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna go. Uh, any anybody wanna um talk about talk, you know weigh in on that? Uh, uh, I can I can weigh in real quick. I believe the way you one should differentiate yourself is basically in any business following um, Ali and all that. It's quality, quality of service, quality of product, and also marketing. How you market you the quality itself again. Uh -huh. 
Mm-hmm. When you're in a market that's saturated, the, again, you differentiate yourself, again, good quality. For instance, in, in a market, in one of the markets I've seen in the continent where Chinese, the Chinese have basically saturated, the way people differentiate themselves is by providing good quality service, good quality product. Mm-hmm. Knowing if if the product if the other the other products are defective, knowing your own product is always going to be lasting longer. Marketing it and saying other products are basically they're not they're not going to last as long as my product is. Knowing how to market it that way, marketing your product where it's more beneficial and having mm-hmm. a huge range. So marketing and good quality product will always beat any competition. Mm-hmm. So if you in any, even in any saturated market, if for instance, digital in digital courses, mm-hmm. this is a saturated market. But if you provide good quality product, again, good quality content, and know how to market that content properly, mm-hmm. it beats out any competition. So good quality product and good quality marketing will beat any competition any day and anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what, do, what do you think, Doc? Um. I think you. Sh- I think a good thing. Well, he's in Savannah, Georgia. He's in a rural area. Mm-hmm. Well, not a rural area, but Savannah, Georgia is close to Charleston, South Carolina, and I can see where he's coming from about it being oversaturated. Um, but one of the things is you can study the other companies and find out what they're not doing. Um, I think Russell Simmons said I watched the documentary "The How to Mend um, Men Who Built America," and he mm-hmm. said. To be successful, you got to think about something people want and provide it. Those companies aren't providing everything that um, have the market saturated. So you have to be the brother to say, hmm, let me see what I can do to try to help them out and provide a different service. Um, You know, we have Apple, we have um, Android, both of those. We have the iOS operate system. We have the Android operate system. Both mm-hmm. of those operating systems do not provide the same functionalities and they don't provide the same service mm-hmm. because I remember and and this was the thing. I don't know if everybody else remembers it. But remember, iOS, Apple software is so proprietary. So all the people back in the day, anybody that knows about cell phones, people used to take music and not pay for it and put it on a damn cell phone. So. The thing that about the Android software, one of the first things why people was like, I'm not switching to no damn iPhone. They couldn't listen to the music for free. An iOS phone, the iOS, the software, you had to buy everything from iTunes. With an Android based software system back in the day, you used to have to put the mute, you could get music for free. So those two things are an example of I don't want to buy the other one, but I want the best service. So you had people in the market to say, I'll get Apple, I'll get Android. And mm-hmm. it's still that debate today. So for the young man, you have to look at it like that. What does Android offer that draws people to it? What does Apple offer that draws people to it? Because those are very competitive, in- competitive industries. They're oversaturated mm-hmm. because you have to remember at the end of the day, both of those companies are trying to make money. And as an individual, mm-hmm. you're trying to make money. So that's just my take on it. You know, um. I'm glad you guys, you guys have helped me because uh, at first, you know, when I think about what I do personally with the the manosphere and black male content, I, I don't really think that it's saturated. But then when I look back at his original question, entering the saturated market, you know, black YouTube, um, you know, let's just imagine if it was in a small city, whatever, you know, there's a lot of black YouTubers. And there are a lot of black YouTubers to talk about, let's say, entertainment. Um, but one of the things that I do and, and other people like maybe Jada Black and even me, I talk about a more from a pro black perspective, if you want to say that, or more of a pro male perspective. Um, so that's how I entered the entertainment market. What is what you guys now know is called the celebrity junk. And if anybody um, knows a celebrity junk. That's a that's my celebrity show. Shout out to brother Aunt James, um, who we play his beat uh, about sixty percent of the time now. Go to staffmusic.com and check him out. S T A F F M U Z I K. Right, that's a uh, staff music. So that's my entrance into the market that allowed me to reach black men in the way that I couldn't do it before, which was through the celebrity junk thing. 
Um, let me just also talk about if you're in a um, if you're in a, a small town. I I would also want to ask why would you want to enter in a saturated market in a small town? Um, now, I mean, what, what, what I agree with everybody is saying right now, but here's what I want to get a lot of black men to understand. I'm in Uganda right now. Every time I go outside, there are people selling chapatis. There are people selling um, Ugali. There are people selling everything that everybody else is selling. And do you know what? If what that shows me is that this industry is easy to get into. Um, it doesn't make a lot of money. And it's a lot of competition. For me, all of that spells big trouble. Like if you look at coronavirus, all those people were hit first. OK. Uh, where we should be at is what is something that even if the market could be saturated or whatever, what is something that I have a very good advantage of? And I can tell you right now, I don't get the most views in black YouTube, but I do a lot of black male content and I know that nobody is going to do this. OK, I'm still working on my customer service here and there. God willing. But, um, you know, same thing. A transportation service, YouTube, music, I have credentials and pass over. It hurts. Oh, OK, 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 OK. Uh, transportation service, YouTube, music, I have credentials. There's those things are 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 easier to YouTube transportation. I don't know about transportation, right? But music, all of those things are 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 are, are that you can make unique. Transportation services is definitely a necessity for that. But YouTube is such that you can customize whatever you do to a certain audience. Um, and that's the problem. That's why I think I have the staying power uh, that I do. I'm, I'm trying to reach black men. Um, I don't make my content for men in general. I don't make my content for black women. I make my content for just black men. Everything I do, I make it for this. And I come up with a strategy that attacks a niche, a niche market. So let me talk about this, right? <clears throat> just real quick. You know, there's many fitness channels. But then you have fitness channels that challenge very unique things. Um, fitness channels that might just focus on core exercises, right? I'm just giving an example. You have fitness channels that might just be a vegan fitness channel. You know, you're starting to see things like that. Uh, 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 no, you know, all of these different types of um, fitness channels for, uh, uh, for, for, for older women, right? And it's only targeting a certain demographic. So now you're seeing these people that have a big idea, but then they make it small. Like this podcast is called what? The Hall of Game. This is for guys who are interested in business, academia, um, things like this. So not a lot of people are interested in it, but it's such a niche thing that the people who are interested in it are really interested in it. And YouTube works the same way. YouTube, there's much you can do. Entertainment, business. But then let's scale it down to a niche market, very specific. Like you can, you, 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 you have a broad market that you can always go back into a content strategy. A content strategy, for example, there was um, a, a channel that was trying to just reach people in law school. But what Daryl Eves did is they started talking about uh, not just law school, but uh, lo a, a, a lawyers, but the, the, the work day of a law school, paralegals, what their job was in it, right? They took a very broad thing and then they reached a bigger audience eventually, but then they brought it back to what it is, right? So you can always expand out, but then you should be known to doing something very niche. Even on my channel, I talk about the black community. I can talk about uh, racism. I can talk about sports, but, but I'm known for what? Talking about black male stuff. That's my, that's what I'm known for. I go right back to that all the time, right? I can talk about soilers. I can talk about business. We could talk about, you know, picking up chicks and stuff like that. All that is in my content bag. But at the end of the day, I come right back to the source of all what it is. And it revolves all around black American male life. So a lot of guys need to be able to do that. And if you have problems with that, I would ask you to watch Nick Nimmin on YouTube. Um, watch. Daryl Eve, watch um, uh, what's this other guy's name? You know, guys like you know, 
uh, Nick Nimmin, uh, Brian, Brian D. Johnson is, is probably one of the best guys. Look at how you can make your, 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 your content niche very specific. Look at how you can stand out. Um, yeah. And, and, and people fail for, for whatever Hassani said is, uh, you know, not being unique, not being the brother says SEO that can help you, but SEO is not going to make you unique. That just gets you more eyeballs. You need to be unique in the game. People on YouTube are good now. Uh, people in black YouTube are good now. Okay. Uh, people in trucking are good. Everybody's good. The top guys are good. Let me tell you something real quick. Let me brag. If you try to come and compete with me in the manosphere, you compete with me. I, I can put out a hundred videos a month. My videos are well edited. Um, I can hit you with different topics, different streams from all across the content board. If a guy wants to come into this market, I, I got you covered. But you can you can beat me by by being different than me, right? Like you can do better than me by not you, you can have a different strategy than me and reach something that I wasn't thinking about. That's the beauty of 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 of, of, of business, right? Uh, anybody want to add to this? And we'll go ahead and sh shut it down. Oh, if you uh, mind if I just take it real quick? Um, Go ahead. I didn't. I didn't even think about my athletic brothers. Um, for my athletic brothers, if you are looking for a way to exercise, you know, that athletic uh, edge of yours, I would definitely also look into um, becoming a journeyman in combat sports, or becoming or to start looking into professional wrestling. Now, it may sound funny, but you know what I mean? For you to have all that, you know, if you have an athletic build, if you work out every day, you know, you want to put that physique to use, you might as well put it in, in a form of entertainment. Um, with some professional wrestlers, you know, you don't have to go the WWE route, but there's local, you know, wrestling camps all over the country where there's small shows, but you get paid, you know, a few hundred dollars you know, to do a show, you know, every couple of weeks or every month or whatever, you know, how they do their programs. And even with uh, being a, a journeyman, um, whether uh, MMA or boxing, you know, you don't have to necessarily lose every fight, but you're kind of like the card filler. You know, so if you, you know, if you can go four rounds in a, you know, in a boxing match and they kind of need you to, uh, to fill the card, you know, that may be a way just to bring in some extra income and you know, and if you could get if you get good at it, you never know what that could um, could spring into. So, um, just a, a couple things from my athletic brothers. I totally forgot to add that in there. And no problem, no problem. Anybody else? Last words, and so we can go ahead and shut it down. Any last words, brothers? All right, let me throw this in here. I take this out. Here's something I noticed too. A lot of people want to do a lot of stuff, but they're not sure about it. One of the things people need to start doing when you just don't know and you still have a lot of skills and stuff, you need to sit down with somebody who can ask you a lot of important questions. Like, what is it that you really want to do? What right. Are, what, right. Are your, what are your skill sets? Right. What, what do you have available to you at Hello. this very moment? Do you have a, do, look here, do you have a certain ca cash flow that you, you can deal with right on hand? They need to be asked all those questions and look, and plus go and research stuff that look here. You may not actually want to do it, but go and if you got it on your mind and something you're interested in, just go and do a little research on it. I don't think that costs us a little time. That's it. And that way it will give you a much clearer, it, it will help you kind of like what you call be a whiteboard. You can throw all those ideas against them. And they can sit there and talk to you in a way that it will help clear your thoughts up and point you in good direction or help you find the direction that you that you feel comfortable and you're more geared toward going in. All right. And that's all I'm going to say about all that. You, you dropped some knowledge there, the OG. Go ahead. Well, um, one of the things is black men just watch the trends. What's going on? I know a lot of black men will disagree with what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it. The tech market is going to get oversaturated in the years to come because everybody is everybody is getting into it. You have to look down the line and have vision. That's why I have switched from being exclu exclusively in the tech to being slash faculty to eventually being 
over the management part of it because every market gets oversaturated. Um, I remember when I was studying computer science back in the 90s and the 80s, Java got over um, saturated with people trying to be Java programmers. And black men, we have to see what is coming down the line because every school now is pushing for this. It's great every school is pushing for it, but you got to think. Once there are so many people that can do it and it and it pretty much, uh, what's the word, drowns the price of what I can get paid, what are you going to get paid to do next? So you got to think, well, my five-year plan is to stick to tech. My next five years, I got to get out of there and try something else. People could fuss with me and argue with me all they want to, but it is going that way. Everybody in their grandma wants to get into tech right now, and it's going to get oversaturated. You got to think about what markets are out there that are being untouched. That's why I'm switching a little by little to automation, because I know that's the next big thing to happen. You got to think about what's going to come. Try to get ahead of the curve. So when it does happen, you can be the person at the top saying, I was already here. I can help you get to where I'm at. That's right. That's right. Shout out to Brother Car Designer again. And thank you, uh, Brother Terrence B, DeMarcus Cousins. Third cousin, <laughs> I made 125K doing Uber and food delivery in Florida. Bite Squad is the wave. And you can even use a rental car with them and Instacart. Get that money, bro. Instacart. What is Instacart? I keep hearing about that. Oh, it's where people go shop for you. Um, Basically, I've heard a lot about it. Uh, Dave was talking about it earlier. Basically, you you don't go shop for your groceries. People go shop for it and they bring it to your car and put it in the back of your car. And it's taken off lately because of the coronavirus. And people don't have to be around one another. So basically, O'Shea, say you were back over here in the States and you wanted to cook a dinner tonight. You know that you get all work at six. You could put the order in and by seven or seven thirty, they have the stuff ready for you. They bring it to your car. Damn. OK. All right. I'm I'm liking that. I'm a lazy nigga, too. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know. So I'm, I'm already liking how that's going on right there. All right, brother. So, uh, all right, guys. Any any uh, other other last words and stuff like um, that? Just one more, um, in, in case. Um, in terms of the brother who just spoke about tech, I agree mm-hmm. and also disagree in in that f- facet. Um, I'm in, I'm in tech. I'm in AI. I'm in I design. I'm in data science, machine learning, deep learning. I do all that. And in terms of tech being oversaturated i don't see that happening anytime soon because of most of the what's coming out the pipeline with iot blockchain and all that there's a lot coming out on the pipeline and currently even with right now companies are looking for blockchain developers paying up to 350k and they can't find anybody and this is for blockchain development and all that. So in terms of tech, it's still going to be a huge market because, again, it can be saturated. It can't be saturated because it's always ever growing. It's always going to evolve. Again, he spoke of AI, and AI is what's coming up, the pipeline too, in terms of deep learning, machine learning, in terms of data science and all that. That's in, that's in line what's coming up. In terms of IoT and all the fourth industrial revolution, that's what's coming up in terms of tech. And it's going to be a huge market, especially within the startup. So tech is, I believe tech is always going to be there, but it's always going to be evolving. And it's always going to need bright minds to solve new problems. Mm-hmm. And with terms of the, well, currently, why I believe a side hustle is needed right now because of what's going on. We've seen the pandemic, we've seen high unemployment, we've seen a lot of a lot of things happening currently in the United States and the world, and there's always a, a lot of uncertainty currently. So again, utilizing what you know to create a side hustle can aid in dealing with these uncertainties because no job is certain right now. Every job, anybody can get fired in the, tomorrow or the next. So a side hustle can hold you over till you get your job. Or a side hustle, if you do your side hustle well enough, it becomes your main your main source of income. So every, I believe every individual should have a side hustle. And it's important right now because it's 
it, with this time with a lot of uncertainty, a side hustle is needed. And utilizing what you know to create a side hustle is the most beneficial way right now to start. If you if you're in trucking and you decide, okay, I know trucking, but can I move my side hustle into the cannabis part part of trucking and see what I can do in there? Mm-hmm. So there are different ways you can just go into it. But again, a side hustle is needed and it's needed right now with the, with this period of uncertainty. So that's my that's my own snippet on basically side hustle, especially right now. Okay, okay, no, 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 no problems, uh, brothers uh, Ali. Is Ali have anything else to can say? You, can you hear me? Yes, nope, sir. I'm, I hear all, you now. I'm all set, Oche. I appreciate you having me on. Okay, and we uh, we need to do some building up shows with me and brother Ali. Guys, don't, don't forget to subscribe to Coach Ali's Corner. Again, he's a, a brother that uh, he does a lot of good content. He comes on here every day and shares some knowledge. And this is a brother that I think is a very, very uh, him and Doc, right? You know, they've really uh, as as they've joined the hall. You know they, you know they, they've they they're here almost every night, so they're they're here to to and they they add to the conversation. Shout out to the brother engineering the truth that came on. He's a, a real engineer, uh, Mr. O'Shea Linux. Um, you know we we this this show is more or less about bringing black men together, right? And because there are brothers out there that um, that need help, we're gonna grow from this point on. By by next year. Uh, I think we might have a thousand people to show, right? I think it's because the world just hasn't gotten out. So we want to be in the business of, uh, you know, bringing more black men together and uh, talking to our people first. You know, right now in the country, uh, we have so many people that are trying to talk to white people and tell them to change. And we have people protesting the system, but we're not talking to each other, right? And uh, the, 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 the main thing that we can do as African-American men is we need to talk to our people. And we need to help our people, right? That's the main reason why we do this. Uh, I can be doing a Sunday Rumble right now with five and six hundred people in the chat talking about nothing, but but we'll, but I'm here trying to bring black men together so we can talk to our people. And we need to talk to our black men more so than ever right now. We don't need to be asking white people to do things for us and, and all of that. We should be talking directly to the men that we are trying to help which is our people who come from those slave ships and that ended up in North America and America to be exact. So we, we got to keep, uh, and that includes our brothers from uh, you know, other parts of the, of the diaspora also shout out to the brother, Tony Davis and, uh, and Kenny Conjo, right? So we need to talk to our people. So we need to talk to our people and brother Kenny Conjo's in the tech industry, Mike Clemens. So let's talk to our people, help our men, uh, you know, come up, you know, this is what we need to be, you know, talking to. We know we need to be talking about, Talking to our people that matters. We 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 should tell tell uh, the other brothers about the show. Tell people about Brother Ali. Tell people about uh, Doctor uh, Doctor D. Tell people about O'Shea Linux. We got to be serious about talking to our men because our men are the ones that are in trouble right now. We be we we stay in trouble, uh, and if we don't have these conversations, we gonna always be in trouble. All right. We can talk about everything else, but we got to talk to our people. So um, and, and, and that's what every other group is doing. Other groups are not, you know, begging people as much They They talk to their people about what their people need to do to change. And, you know, if we can change, you know, just our, our men, wake it, wake our people up with just a little bit. We able to do more. So let's continue to talk to 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 to, to our brothers in the world that are some of them are lost. Right. And some of them are, are, are uh, have problems. Um, a lot of us have had businesses that have failed and jobs that have been been fired off of and things like that. And uh, this is the place that we come and we all gain knowledge yesterday. The brother, I don't know if a brother Ali was here yesterday. Uh, We dealt with a brother KC that was a Nigerian American uh, businessman. And I I, I know he knew what he's talking about because it's similar. And the brother really opened the idea. I never heard Gabe be quiet before on a show, right? but, but, (laughs) but when KC was dealing with everybody yesterday, he had what you because Gabe is a can be a little bit contrarian in his approach on on these shows. He likes to challenge ideas, and uh, but there were some things that the brother came with some information yesterday that could not be challenged. So, but we don't know that unless we deal with with, with people and brothers that are our people in, in, in other different ways that are Nigerian American, Dominican people that want to be in our community. We need to give these people a chance to give us knowledge that we don't have. 
That's the only way we get opportunities. I know I'm being long with it, but I gotta, we gotta put this in our people's face. We have to be concerned about helping black men. We are, we're underserved. Nobody's going to serve us if we do not serve our, uh, ourselves. So yeah, black men coming together. I have emails all the time. Get involved in the conversations. Go start your own podcast. Start your own channels and have these podcasts. You know, we need more content creators in the manosphere. We just do. Shout out to brother uh, Najem Yab and Yashiro. Damn right, we got to talk to people so we can build. I know that brother got a brother. Don't you need get an AMD? 3950x over there player how's it working out for you so any last words by anybody hey i got a few uh, look i ain't trying to rub it up but i got a few last words i'll say i need to talk to you um once you kill it what's the name i need to talk to you behind the behind closed doors if you don't mind look here start with where you're at right hello start with where you are hello you know sometimes the very thing you think you may not like might be might end up being the very thing you end up loving. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? So look at while you're working, look, while you're working on that, that main, while you're working on that, 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 that job that, that's supporting you at the moment, look here. There's a hundred different things you can start buying and investigate on the way to the house. While you're watching, look, while you were spending like three or four hours watching TV. Man, you could take one of them hours and do a little research. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't trying to look, I ain't trying to knock your phone. I want to fix it where you can have even more fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. That's all. Look at that's all I'm trying to get over to people. Nobody and look at I don't like to just put it out like that, but I like to just for well, just for the purposes of what we're talking about. Look, man, I got muscular this for I ride in a I got a scooter, Candy Apple Red scooter, four wheel, pretty nine, and a, and a motorized wheelchair. I hardly ever leave the house, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm still making money. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Tell them. I don't worry about just doing business with the people around me. No, They'll look at it. you cut your teeth on the people who are around you. Then what? Well, what you do? You reach out to the people all over the world because guess what? The internet done changed the game. That's all I'm saying about that, all right? Oh, okay. all right, all right. Yeah. So, shout out to brother Nishim. Yeah, I, I, I'm just now learning about this. I know EVGA is the most expensive 2080 card right now. I think that I think you can get. So, guys, thank you so much. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks again, uh, Doc and brother Ali. Uh, you, know, you guys are amazing. Um, we 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 had a lot of powerful brothers come on the last few nights, and we all are meeting each other. And we all are, uh, you know, I, I'm here every night, right? Because y'all know I'm a Sunday Rumble fuckery nigga. This <laughs> cutting it, this shit cuts into my Sunday Rumble money. Now y'all know how much them Sunday Rumbles make. Now y'all niggas know I get Taz and them over there. We talking about millions on a Sunday, <laughs> but I'm here, right? I stopped my nigga shit, so uh, so y'all know my Rumble shows. The, it, it's at least. It's $500 every time I do it. But anyways, uh, this is more important. So, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll send out an email. Uh, appreciate you, brothers. And um, I'm taking my ass to bed. Peace. Mm -hmm.